Universitas yang berpusat di Jalan Perintis Kemerdekaan Kota Tangerang hadir dengan 8 program. Pada tahun 1993,
Pada tahun 1993, berdiri sebuah perguruan tinggi yang berlokasi di pusat kota Tangerang dengan nama awal STIE Muhammadiyah yang merupakan salah satu amal usaha milik persyarikatan Muhammadiyah di bawah naungan Majelis Pendidikan dan Pengembangan Muhammadiyah. Seiring dengan berjalannya waktu, menyusul pula berdirinya STAI Muhammadiyah Tangerang dan disusul dengan stikes Muhammadiyah Tangerang. Melalui musyawarah pimpinan daerah Muhammadiyah Kota Tangerang periode 2005 sampai dengan 2010, ketiga lembaga tersebut kini disepakati untuk bergabung dengan nama Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang. Universitas yang berpusat di Jalan Perintis Kemerdekaan Kota Tangerang hadir dengan 8 program Fakultas Sarjana dan 2 program Pasca Sarjana. Antara lain, Fakultas Agama Islam, Fakultas Kesehatan, Fakultas Ilmu Sosial dan Ilmu Politik, Fakultas Pariwisata dan Industri Kreatif, dan Fakultas Unggulan lainnya. Juga program Pasca Sarjana untuk program Studi Islam dan program Manajemen. Selain itu, Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang juga sudah memiliki lebih dari 90 penghargaan internasional, 285 dosen, dan diantaranya 48 dosen tercatat sebagai dosen terbaik. Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang kini masuk dalam 10 besar kampus dengan mahasiswa terbanyak di perguruan tinggi Muhammadiyah. Dengan jumlah mahasiswa mencapai kurang lebih 17.000, tentunya Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang juga memiliki fasilitas yang mendukung untuk mengembangkan mahasiswanya seperti perpustakaan, ruang radio, ruang prakarya, sarana ibadah, kelas yang nyaman, dan juga banyak tempat mendukung lainnya. Selain itu, Ruang lingkup di kampus utama Muhammadiyah Tangerang juga dikelilingi tempat-tempat strategis seperti mall, ruang taman terbuka, pasar kuliner Tangerang, stasiun kereta kota, dan masih banyak lagi. Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang juga memiliki program perkuliahan karyawan dan juga regulersip untuk mempermudahkan perkuliahan bagi para pekerja untuk mengatur jadwal kuliahnya demi mewujudkan cita-cita yang lebih baik di masa yang akan datang. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah dalam usia sejak tahun 2009 sampai 2019 ini yang insya Allah per 3 Agustus 2019 itu genap Uni Semawadiyah Tangerang berusia 10 tahun. Dalam usianya di satu dasawarsa ini betapa masyarakat begitu meminati putra putrinya untuk dititipkan dididik di Uni Semawadiyah Tangerang. Sehingga dalam waktu yang singkat untuk sebuah institusi perguruan tinggi bisa diminati sampai kita memiliki mahasiswa hingga saat ini sekitar 17.000. Oleh karenanya, kami dengan kepercayaan yang begitu besar dari masyarakat, memacu kita dalam usia yang 10 tahun ini terus mengembangkan fasilitas yang menunjang pendidikan sehingga kita terus memacu peningkatan mutu. Nah, kita berharap ke depan Unis Mawadi Tangerang ini terus maju, saya kira seperti itu. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang. Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang. Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang. Pilihan terbaik. Pilihan terbaik untuk masa yang lebih baik. Yang lebih baik. Demi masa depan yang lebih baik. Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang. Smart choice for the better future. I'm also a college student of the English Education Studio Program at the University of Muhammadiyah, Tangra. The teaching and learning process in the class, I feel is very good and effective. They have been implementing learning process using technology-based media and information communication. 
to support educational goals 4.0. One more, the opportunity, if we have good English skill, the opportunity for a better career will be easier. Lingkungan pembelajarannya yang sangat oke, okay, sangat fun, serta kalian akan dibantu oleh dosen yang sangat profesional dan membantu kalian dalam mengambil berbagai mata kuliah bahasa Inggris. So, be part of University Muhammadiyah Tangerang. Come and join us, study in English Education Study Program, Muhammadiyah University of Tangerang. What are you waiting for? Join us now! Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor for me to see you all on this special occasion. Before we start the event to all the before we start the event to all the participants, please change your display name following this format name underscore institution underscore participant. For the example, Panisa underscore SMA ABC underscore participant. And please open your camera, use the virtual background that has provided by the committee. Thank you. Now I would like to read the webinar rules. First, participants are polite and presentable. Second, the participant ID in the webinar must use the real name as stated in the registration form. Third, entering the webinar, participant is expected to turn off the audio feature or setting mute while the speaker is presenting the presentation materials. Fourth, questions can be asked in the chat column with the format name underscore institution underscore question. Fifth, questions can be asked during the Q&A session submitted in the chat column. Sixth, in the Q&A session, questions can also be asked orally by starting with clicking the raise hand icon before asking. Seven, attendance list will be provided at the end of the event. Eight, only participants who fill in the attendance list will get a certificate. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin wabihinasta'in ala murid bin yaudin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Anbiya'i wa mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi al-jima'in. Rabbi sirahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa ngul ubdata milisani yang kuahu kawli amma bali. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to English Festival 2022 New Normal in Education, Opportunities, and Challenges. How are you today? I hope you are in good health and happy today. I'm glad to see you all in this morning. First of all, let's say thanks to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who has given us guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy, so that we can attain and participate in this special webinar without any obstacles. Praise and salutation upon our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who had brought us to the path of light from the darkness in this life. We would like to welcome the honorable Mr. Dr. Haji Ahmad Amarwo, MPD as rector of Muhammadiyah University of Tangerang, the honorable Mr. Dr. NOR SPD MM as dean of teacher training and education faculty of Muhammadiyah University of Tangerang. The Honorable Mrs. Dr. Ifi Imania, MPD as Vice Dean. The Honorable Ms. Dr. Arjulayana SS, MPD as the Chairwoman of our webinar. The Honorable Mr. Muhammad Iqbal Firdaus, MPD as Head of English Education Study Program. The Honorable All the Committee in English Festival webinar. The Honorable to our beloved lecturers, speakers, and moderators. And ladies and gentlemen and friends who participate in the English Festival webinar today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Vanessa Cecilia and my partner, Anissa Duyana Nur. We are from University of Muhammadiyah, Tangra. It is a wonderful and precious change for us to be your master of ceremony in this great event on Wednesday, 23 of February 2022. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on this special morning, we have several agendas. So allow us as the master of ceremony to read our webinar agendas today. The first is opening. Second, recite the Holy Quran. 
Third, singing national anthem and march Muhammadiyah for speeches. Fifth, the main agenda is the presentation of the material by the speakers, followed by question and answer session. And the last is closing. Ladies and gentlemen, to shorten the time before we begin this event, let us say basmala together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this event beneficial for all of us, and this event can run smoothly and conducively. The next agenda is to recite the Holy Quran that will be delivered by Sister Intan Sarifani, and please for all the audience mute the audio. For your information, Intan Sharifani is a fourth semester student of Muhammadiyah University of Tara, and she is one of the outstanding students who passed the Tafish Juice 29 and also Juice 30 exam. To Sister Intan Sharifani, the stage is yours. <clears throat> A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Yas'alunaka anish shahril haram qitanin fi Qul qitalun fihi kabir Wa saddun an sabilillahi wa kufrun bihi wal masjidil haram وَالْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَهْلِهِ مِنْهُ أَكْبَرُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ وَلَا يَزَالُونَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ حَتَّى يَرُدْ Dukum an dinikum inis tato'u Wa man yartadid minkum fa ulaika habitat a'maluhum فَأُولَئِكَ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارُ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Masya Allah, thank you Sister Intan Sarifani for recite the Holy Quran. The next agenda, we will sing the National Anthem Indonesia Raya and Mars Muhammadiyah. Please, all the audience, unmute the audio. Semua 
Alhamdulillah, thank you very much for the PTSI and the audience. The next agenda is welcoming speech that will be delivered by Ms. Dr. Arjulayana SS MPB as the chairwoman of the English Festival 2022. To Ms. Dr. Arjulayana SS MPB, the stage is yours. Thank you. Our Honorable Rector, Mr. Dr. Haji Ahmad Amrullah MPB. The Dean of Teachers Training and Education, Mr. Dr. Enawa MPD, Vice Dean of Abkip Sumiani MPD and Dr. Ikri Imania MPD, Key Department of English Education Program, Mr. Muhammad Iqbal Firnaus Mpum, All Committee of English Festival 2022, distinguished our keynote speakers, respected participants. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa bihi nasta'in ala umurid dunia wa ad-din, wa salatu wa salamu ala asrafil anbiya iwal mursalim. Amma ba'lam. First of all, let's say thanks and all praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has been giving us guidance, health day, and opportunity so we can participate in this program without any problem. All praise upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the best teachers in the world. On behalf of the English Festival Committee 2022, I am delighted to welcome you all to the English Festival 2022. The outbreak of COVID-19 doesn't limit Remotable University, lecturers, students, and practitioners in making innovation in this field of education, English, teaching, and learning. In this wonderful occasion, we would like to bring our theme related to the pandemic COVID-19 situation new normal education opportunities and challenges. The English festival is conducted in virtual format and will be lasted from 23 until 24 February 2022, consisting of webinar and English competition. Readiness of English teaching and learning process certainly has significant impact for us. Of course, many adjustments must be made by teachers and students in the use of technology with online learning, hybrid or blended learning. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to thank the 13th school from around Tangerang for involving in this English competition. Storytelling, which contains new center and reading poetry. There will be 41 participants who will involve the competition for two days. And this competition will be held in online or virtual. Uh, format. Hopefully, this English festival webinar and English competition can run smoothly. Moreover, we can work with each other and gain new insights. Thank you very much for all the opportunities and challenges. Nasuminallahu fatihan qarib wa basirin mu'minin wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much to Ms. Dr. Arjulana SSMPD for the welcoming speech. And next, step on to the following agenda. We would like to invite Ms. Sumiani MPD as Vice Dean of Teacher Training and Education Faculty, University of Muhammadiyah, Tangerang, to give an opening speech. To Ms. Sumiani MPD, the stage is yours. Terima kasih. Maaf ada sedikit gangguan di saya ya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mudah-mudahan terdengar suaranya. Yang terhormat Ketua Pelaksana Ibu Dr. Arjulayana MPD. Halo Ibu, mudah-mudahan sehat. Dan kelihatan sehat sekali. Yang terhormat dosen dan seluruh panitia yang sudah bercapek-capek ria untuk mengadakan English Festival 2022 ini. Yang terhormat juga untuk Himaprodini 
yang sudah siap membantu sudah sebulan ini membantu kegiatan English Festival 2022 ini. Terima kasih Nak atas bantuannya. Yang terhormat juga untuk para guru, pembina OSIS, di semua SMA, SMK yang siswanya atau sekolahnya berpartisipasi dalam acara webinar ini. Dan tentu saja untuk kalian semua, siswa-siswi SMA, SMK yang ikut berpartisipasi untuk mengikuti English Festival 2022. Senang sekali kalian bisa mengikuti acara ini sebagai bentuk bocoran kalau kalian mendapatkan sesuatu dari acara ini entah itu ada satu dua tiga sampai apapun nanti ada sedikit hadiah untuk kalian kalian langsung bisa diterima di SM eh, di SM, uh, di Universitas Muhammadiyah Tangerang dengan potongan nih Bu Arjoyana mesti kasih tahu juga nih ya dengan potongan pendaftaran dua juta sembilan ratus ribu jadi itu sudah hadiah untuk peserta sudah dapat hadiah dua juta sembilan ratus ribu seluruh peserta sudah mendapatkan hadiah tersebut yang dapat tentu saja ya jadi wah saya nggak dapat juara nih eh, sudah dapat dua koma sembilan Ya, nanti bisa diurus sama Bu Arjulayana dalam bentuk sertifikat surat keterangan bahwa anak-anak tersebut sudah mengikuti ini dan berhak mendapatkan potongan 2,9 juta tersebut. Jadi sudah dapat hadiah nih dari awal nih ya. Jadi supaya lebih ya supaya lebih lebih ini lagi apa e, semangat lagi buat apa-apa saja sudah dapat nih 2,9 nih ya. Nah. Acara ini sebenarnya adalah salah satunya untuk membangkitkan rasa ke eh, sastraan kalian. Lebih banyak ke sastraan karena eh, saya lihat kemarin Bu Akilayana eh, membaca puisi Bu Medieveti katanya ya, terus juga berpidato. Ranting yang kedua, ranting yang ketiga kalau nggak salah Uh, news anchor, news anchor, nah, dan yang keempat ada storytelling. Ini semuanya bermuara pada keterampilan berbicara di bahasa Inggris. Jadi kalau kalian sudah ikut nih, ya pesertanya nih SMA SMK, otomatis bisa menjadi mahasiswa di UMT dan pilih prodi bahasa Inggris. Sebab di sana ada ibu dokter Tanjulayana, ya mudah-mudahan nih seperti Aisyah, ya Aisyah ya Septia ini jangan lupa nanti pergi daftarkan ke UMT. Nah dari empat mata lomba tersebut, insya Allah akan berjalan dengan baik harapan kami. Sebab eh, penjuriannya nanti dikawal oleh dosen-dosen yang open Jadi yang mendapat juara satu memang layak menjadi juara satu. Yang dapat juara dua ya pasti memang layak dapat juara dua. Terus yang nggak ikut, nggak dapat juara, dapat juara tadi 2,9. Kan masuk juara satu, udah dapat juara bla bla bla, dapat lagi 2,9. Tapi bukan berbentuk uang ya sayang ya. Bentuknya adalah potongan harga ketika kalian mendaftar di UMT. Prodi mana? Boleh prodi mana saja, tapi ini yakin kalian siapnya ke prodi bahasa Inggris. Ya, sekali lagi terima kasih untuk para guru pembina OSIS yang sudah membimbing siswanya untuk mengikuti festival ini. Saya berharap kerjasama kita terus berlanjut untuk tahun-tahun yang akan datang. Sebab ini bukan setahun sekali, ini adalah mata lomba festival yang selalu diadakan setiap tahun. Tidak cuma bahasa Inggris, di prodi-prodi lain juga. Sebab kalau pembina OSIS biasanya menghayat semua anak-anak yang mau berlomba. 
Jadi nanti kita di bulan 10 ada festival bulan bahasa. Silakan uh, anak-anaknya juga untuk diikutkan ke sana. Apakah ada ada potongan 2,9 lagi? Kita lihat karena yang seperti ini belum tentu setiap saat ada. Ada batas berbatas waktu. Jadi mudah-mudahan dan yang sekarang ikut festival semuanya sudah mendapatkan juara 2 9. Silakan, tapi bukan berbentuk uang ya. Sekali lagi ya, silakan. <tuh> Itu saja, um, Bapak, Ibu-Ibu, dosen, Bu Abdul Layana, Hifa, dan semua anak-anakku sekalian. Um, Mudah-mudahan acara ini berjalan dengan baik, semuanya sehat. Itulah kenapa acara ini bentuknya webinar, supaya mengurangi kontak. Kita cuma bersih tatap saja, bersemuka saja, ya. yang lainnya tidak bersentuhan menjaga profesi ngeri juga ya tapi saya lihat wajahnya Bu Abdulayana memang ceria tandanya sehat tandanya tidak terkena covid tandanya hatinya sedang bergembira untuk menerima menjambut kalian semua ikut festival ini sekali lagi terima kasih mudah-mudahan Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mengawal kita sampai akhir acara ini sehingga acara ini berjalan dengan maksimal, berjalan dengan baik, dan semuanya mendapatkan juara yang terbaik. Insya Allah. Amin. Saya rasa cukup. Karena saya lihat wajah-wajahnya. Aduh, Ibu jangan ngomong aja, Bu. Kapan ini, Ibu? Festivalnya, Ibu dimulainya. Oke, okay, Ibu tutup. Eh, Ibu buka ya. Ibu buka acara ini dengan harapan. Berjalan dengan baik. Mendapatkan hasil yang baik. Semuanya mendapatkan juara yang terbaik. Eh, Mudah-mudahan tahun depan kita ketemu lagi dalam acara yang sama, English Festival 2023. Begitu kan Bu Abdulayana ya? Ada lagi. Jadi yang sekarang nggak dapat juara, minggu, eh, tahun depan ikut lagi. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much to Miss Sumiani MPD for the opening speech remarks today. So all the participants, before we start which the format of display name underscore participant. For the example. Vanessa underscore SMA ABC underscore participant. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the main event. There is the presentation of our topic today. We will discuss about new normal in education, opportunities, and challenges by our speakers who will be guided by Mr. Eko Gesu Tekno Empop and Sister Zihni Karinatamami as moderator is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, Vanessa Dwiani Nur. Uh, to let me in uh, as the moderator. Uh, today, uh, guys, um, we will, yeah, we will, we will uh, hear and then about Ibu Santri, yeah, Ibu Santri uh, present about um, uh, education. Yeah, <clears throat> I will um, first. Yeah, I will read about. Her CV, her CV is so marvelous uh, because uh, I I read that <clears throat> she is from Kupang. Yeah. Kupang is very uh, very yeah, beautiful um, place because uh, my my wife ever been there and then she talked me about she talked about uh NTT is very marvelous and then we will uh, uh read about um, ibu santri emilin 
Pink Saboy Jahimo SPD and then M App Ling Linguistic Application uh, and then PhD Postgraduate uh, RMS. <clears throat> I so I read about her CV uh, and then about her works. Uh, about word games and picture, and then women voices. This is uh, influences for me also, because uh, how uh, very applicative uh, to, um, what is it, to teach in English. Okay, and then I will not uh, make so uh, a long speech and then, because uh, her CV is uh, her CV, uh, especially for Ibu uh, Santri, is for very long enough. And then, but I will show you uh, <clears throat> her uh, one, yeah, one, uh, one, one, one book. Uh, that inspired me uh, for word games and pictures. Uh, this book, actually, I will uh, promote yeah, for you guys to read this book. Uh, this book, uh, you can uh, uh, applicate yeah, uh, to the student and then because uh, how we, yeah, how we teach about the word and games and picture. This is especially for flashcard. And then we can use the flashcard to, uh, what is it? To uh, develop uh, students' uh, vocabulary. Okay, uh, let's Ibu Santri uh, Jahimo uh, present uh, her, uh, speech. Okay, Ibu Santri. Okay, thank you, Pa Eka. Am I audible? Can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah. Okay, because it's raining in here, so uh, my bandwidth is a bit low. So hopefully everything's going well and you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, first of all, thank you for such a great introduction. Uh, yeah, I do agree that uh, Nusa Tenggara Timur is great. And one of the scenery, beautiful scenery you can see in my background, it's in Labuan Bajo, Padar Island. Yeah, that's, that's one of those beautiful things. And yeah, I'll jump directly to my presentation. Uh, let me share my screen. Sorry, it takes a bit longer. Okay. Is it visible? Yes. Okay, thank you. So today I'm gonna to be talking about current issues in teaching and learning EFL. I'm trying to relate it to the topic given by the committee members. So um, what I'm going to highlight is about expectation, what we expect and the reality. Uh, or the status quo, if I may say, uh, particularly in this year, 2022. So let me dive into, oh gosh, sorry, I was close by all the, so what are the issues actually? 
I've highlighted several issues here. And the first and main issue is that COVID-19 has changed the entire concept of education. As we know, uh, there is a kind of transition, huge transition since uh, the first time COVID appeared in late 19, uh, 2019, right? Even until now, uh, like the newest version, uh, one version comes after another. And the newest one I think is Omicron. I don't know whether or not there is uh, another one, hopefully not, okay? So this has a great impact, particularly on education. Uh, governments of almost all countries in the world make an effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19 transmission. And um, the effort is from educational field, the effort is like schools shut all across the country, including in Indonesia, right? We all experience that kind of thing. And because uh, the shutting down of school, uh, so there is a kind of distinctive rise of e-learning. And in this case, teaching and learning is undertaken remotely and on digital platforms. Well, so in short, what I can say from this first issue is that education has changed dramatically because of this pandemic. Now, let me move on to another issue that is online learning and similar problems related to online learning still exists even until now. Well, some people say that, okay, now we, we are in the new normal era, but to me, it's not really new normal because the, the same problem still exists until now, the time when I'm talking. Uh, problems from the side of students, problems from the side of teachers, and also parents. Let's see one problem after another. From student side, I can see many students are here and uh, I'm sure after listening to me talking, all of you will nod your head and say yes and amen to that. That, okay, uh, those are really my problems. The first one is lack of devices and internet access. Not all of our students have, have great devices to support online uh, learning and not all of them live in, uh, good access area. Some of them might live in a like, black spot and they don't, they don't have internet access at all. I don't know and I don't know the condition in Java, but in my place in uh, Nusa Tenggara Timur, there are, still, there are still some schools in rural areas uh, in which students live far away from schools and they don't have any access to internet connection. And this makes them hard to join the online uh, learning. This is one of the problems. And then having a good device is another big problem. Not all students have gadgets like laptops, mobile smartphone, I should say because some students do not have that kind of thing. It's 2022 and you might, you might ask like, hello, it's 2022 and you still don't have a kind of smartphone. Yes, that's the fact. Uh, we are not like schools in, well, I once read in the Jakarta Post that uh, starting from like late uh, 2019 or early 2020, since all the schools locked down, Schools in New York, they distributed gadgets to their students, like almost 500,000 gadgets, laptops and tablets, but we can't do that, right? I think not only in, not only in Nusa Tenggara Timur, also in Java, schools can't do that. Schools cannot handle it. Government cannot handle it to distribute gadgets to all the students. And why? Because many students, many teachers, all of us teachers, we are not ready to face this kind of thing. We, we lack of preparation because nobody expects that the pandemic would hit us very hard and would make us fall down. Well, thank God, even until now, we're still standing up tall, right? Uh, so that's 
another problem. The next problem from students is that, well, almost all of them say that home learning, this program, online program, is more stressful than regular classroom. Some of them might be happy because they don't have to, let's say, in reality, they don't have to uh, take a shower even, take a bath. They don't have to put a makeup for ladies to attend the class. They don't have to get dressed, a really nice dress to attend the class. What they usually do is after getting up off their bed, they just turn on the laptop and then start joining the lesson with camera off. But deeper than that or beyond that, they admit that home learning program is more stressful than regular classroom. Why? Because they have no friends around them. As we know, having friends makes the hard lesson in normal classes more manageable and less stressful because they can still talk to their friends. They, they can still you know, discuss or share things with their friends. And uh, basically, they need to socialize. Our students need to socialize, not only stuck alone, with the assignment, with the homework, with the task given by their teachers or lecturers. So what I'd like to say is the workload of online learning, this according to them, not to me. I try to ask them in, in a very informal way, and they say that the workload of online learning is larger, bigger, heavier than that of regular class because they teachers the lecturers than to give them assignments only without you know, explaining things as usual, like in offline class. So it's a kind of overload things for these students. I know it's still a novel concept, but our students need to adapt and it takes time to adapt to this kind of condition. It's been going on for two years and they are still adapting to this condition. Let's move to another problem that, uh, yeah, I mentioned before, right, that not all students live in good spots. Some of them live in bad spots and they are unable to deal with online learning. Well, the government provides free data packages, true, but it's useless, right? If you are in bad spot or, no internet connection at all. What's the free data packages for? Nothing. So uh, I can see now that the government is making effort to support education and sector, especially uh, to make balance uh, for those who live in um, to live in blind spot or black spot area to be able to join the lesson online lesson by providing programs on TV uh, through uh, TVRI, Pelajar uh, di Rumah, if you've ever heard that, or Guru Berbagi Platform. So students can access to uh, that learning program without having internet access. And I think it's way to go. It's, it's a very good effort from the government. Hopefully it's getting better. Uh, not only students. We as teachers, we as lecturers, we do have problems as well related to this uh, online learning. We have, to be, uh, we have to be very careful in choosing uh, the media for teaching. Like all of us have to make extra effort to be creative in using media for our students to be able to interact and engage in the lesson, right? If we don't want them to just look at the screen and keep quiet all the time during the lesson. So we have to be more creative than ever. And then um, this is interesting because all of us here uh, used to be students of FKIP, right? Or all the students here belong to a faculty of teacher training of education or FKIP, right? And in FKIP, we are expected to become teachers. 
So we got, we got lessons when we were students or when you are students now, you get lessons related to how to become teachers, but never you get the lessons about how to become online teachers, how to teach online. And this creates the next problem for teachers, that there is a disconnection between the way teachers were taught to teach when they were in FKIP, or in other words, no particular subject of online teaching. That's why I say a disconnection between the way they were taught and how the course content must be effectively delivered online. They have to struggle themselves. They have to make effort themselves to be able to survive in teaching and learning online. This is a problem as well. And uh, another one, I think, because there is no clear guide guidelines or expectation from teachers to follow or uh, what to do in this online. Well, they can read through the internet, but uh, you know, uh, some random sources out there, uh, I don't know which one is more trustable than others. And when teaching online, we have, as teachers, we almost have no place for feedback. Almost no place. We have to find a way, we have to struggle a lot to find a way out for these kind of problems. Uh, we know there are uh, several appropriate learning tools to support our online class, like Zoom, Google Meet, YouTube, but we have to choose uh, we have to choose the best one based on our purpose. We can't choose randomly. We have to, we have to really careful in, in choosing which one is the best one for us to be used in our online teaching. Uh, this, this other problem is the, well, I don't know, but for senior teachers, they face this kind of problem. Very senior teachers. That teachers, uh, we have to face that, that teachers, some teachers are still disabled in accessing technology. It, that happens in my place. Like very senior teachers, they only give instruction through WhatsApp to students, meaning that they have no place at all to explain, right? They just send instructions, send assignment all the time, all the way. And this creates overload work for our students. Uh, parents as well. Teachers need parents to help their children, especially to monitor them during the online learning, right? Because their parents are there with them. We can't control the students because they are far away from us. They are out of sight. Uh, they just, you know, if they turn on the camera, they're just sitting in front of the camera, but we can't control something happened beyond that. And in this case, we do hope that their parents can help us to monitor them. But parents have their own problems in dealing with this. Like, First of the problem is they can't help their children with technical problems because not all parents can deal with uh, technical issues. Not all parents are uh, skillful in digital, uh, digital work, for example, digital issues. So uh, this creates another difficulty for parents. They can't help their parents if it relates to technical issues because they lack of understanding about technology. Sometimes their children may not ask for help. Why? Because they don't want to be disturbed by their parents. They want to be left alone with whatever they're doing. For example, they're joining the lesson. At the same time, they're playing online games. That's why they don't, they don't want their, their parents to come and monitor them, to look at them, what, what they're doing, actually. So children makes the problem to their parents, okay? Uh, it's difficult for parents as well to create an 
what we call academic environment at home. Because as we know that classroom environment is one factor to support learning. Some students still join the lessons uh, from their bathroom. Uh, some of them are uh, sitting by the kitchen tables or they're joining from, well, I don't know, maybe some of them join from the bathroom. And it's really inappropriate, but we can't, we can't uh, blame the students because in this case, it's, it's really difficult. And I do admit that, that it's difficult to create a very academic environment at home. And uh, one more thing is children cannot stay engaged. They need to move. So if they have to, uh, can you imagine if they have to sit in front of the laptop uh, for like four to five hours in a day, it's, you know, it's really stressful for them because they can't stay engaged. They have to move here and there. They have to interact with their peers. So I think uh, these are the problems that I can highlight for you from the side of students, the side of uh, lecturers, uh, teachers, and parents. Now, let me move to another issue. It's about uh, how to find effective, if not the most effective teaching method, strategy, techniques, and activities during this online learning. Teachers have to think hard of how to make use of group project or individual project and how to you know, make use of available online resources because they, they are in the uh, uh, they are in the era of transition between traditional to online learning. So everything has, everything has to be new, right? But new doesn't always mean qualified. They have to find the most qualified in order to uh, come to, uh, to come to a better quality better output of their teaching. Uh, in this case, they need to adapt. They need to change. Like since, uh, let's say back in 2018, early 2019, they use a particular method, particular strategy, technique or activity, which they thought uh, was very effective. But it turns out that it cannot, or it, uh, it's no longer effective when it is applied to online teaching. That's why they need to find another, not only another method, another strategy, but another effective method. They have to make sure that by using this method, the teaching and learning will run smoothly will be very effective. And new practices, uh, has, uh, new practices have to be applied to be successful in this online teaching. Well, the next problem is challenges. Uh, I don't know how many of you here are disappointed because of the condition nowadays. No, almost no change. Well, again, they say new normal, uh, like uh, limited meeting version, uh, 50, 50%, 50, 50 uh, hybrid mode, and so on and so forth. But still, I think most of us are still disappointed because of, in my place, uh, we have tried uh, hybrid for two weeks. And then starting from this week, all of us are back online, fully online, because uh, the rate of, uh, what is it? The rate of those who suffer from this virus has increased. So the government has uh, decided that, okay, now back to online. And it's, it's, it's really disappointing, you know, because school is shutting down, 
and online is staying until now. That's why I said disappointment of teaching and learning online still, it's still going on. I don't know, hopefully in the very near time, uh, we can go back to school, uh, offline school. That's what I mean. We can meet our friends. We can do a kind of interaction, direct interaction with our students and so on and so forth. Make things better. And the next one is this one, Matthew effect. I don't know how many of you have heard about this effect, this Matthew effect. Uh, actually, this term has been coined by an American sociologist, Robert Merton, in 1968, and it has been used in different disciplines, including in EFL classes. If you haven't heard about it and you have no idea what Matthew fact is, it's, it's, you might be familiar with um, our double comparative. The, the rich gets richer, the poor gets poorer. Uh, are you familiar with that? Double, uh, double comparative, the more the better, the more the merrier. Yeah, that's, that's what Matthew, Matthew fact is all about. So when we're teaching online, the poor students will remain poor or even poorer, poor in quality, uh, learning quality. That's what I'm talking about. The clever students will get Cleverer. The active students will remain active or be more active. The passive students will remain passive or even more passive. That's what Matthew effect is. I'm trying to provide like the look here. I adopted. You can see the source uh, below. Like if you give positive feedback to our students, you can see the effect. Uh, in the loop, the arrow, uh, it will affect your self-confidence, student self-confidence, and it will lead to uh, boosting up their motivation. Like teacher notices clever and motivated learner and interacts with them. We tend to do that, right? We tend to pay uh, more attention to our clever and motivated students. And we tend to have lots of interaction with them. Because for us, okay, they are very active in the classroom. So it's good. The, the condition of teaching and learning, the atmosphere will be more positive if we interact with the very active students a lot. And by doing this, those students will be stimulated by teachers' talk and teachers' personal attention. So that's the effect. And another effect is these kind of students will sit next to like-minded peers and they practice or compete with their peers. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you have active students in the classroom, they tend to sit with other active students. Why? It's not because they're picky. It's because they want to interact with those active students. And they, they, tend to, they tend to have a feeling, a feeling of uh, competition, positive competition, in order to uh, improve the quality. And then by doing this, those kind of students do well in class tests. And they can develop their identity as good learner. Starting from that stage, they begin to use English not only inside, but also outside school. See how it relates one to another. This is what we call Matthew effect. If we see uh, the two errors from the side, we can see there are cultural capital and social economic capital. When we're talking about cultural capital, we're talking about social assets of a person, for example, education, intellect, style of speech, and so on and so forth. So this cultural capital will enable learner to imagine themselves as English users, and it's a very positive one. And then when we come to social and economic capital, we're talking about economic resources, monetary resources, and 
This capital will provide opportunities to learn English outside school. Okay, so this is about positive feedback. What about negative one? Because, you know, it, it's like two sides of a coin, right? There is positive and also negative. We can't always provide our students with positive feedback. Uh, well, some other times we, we also provide them with negative feedback. And some of our students' character uh, is like they can only be hit by negative feedback. So let's see the effect of negative feedback. This is the look of negative feedback. If you give negative feedback, it will decline confidence and demotivate our students. When you identify, uh, when we as teachers, we identify our learner as low and treat them as such. We treat them as low students or slow learners. Those learners, cannot understand our talk, okay? And uh, they will think or they will find, they will see our materials given as aliens, or they will see our materials as uh, something which is not fun, something which is very complicated. And of course, they don't like it. So starting from our, the way we identify them, it will change the way they see our lesson, they see our material. And uh, if we see from down there, we go up uh, on my right side here, and then we go up uh, to learner can't, the result is learner can't understand teacher talk. Let's see from the down below that our students do not use English. Why? Because they see it as a difficult school subject. When I was a kid, <clears throat> my parents always told me that do not ever say that you hate a particular lesson. Why? Because if you, you say you hate the lesson, you will automatically hate the teacher. Or if you hate the teacher, it can go on the other way around. If you say, well, I don't like Master X, I don't like Mrs. X. Why? Because uh, she's ugly, he's ugly, he's rude, she's rude. But if you hate him or her, you will automatically hate the lesson. So it will, it will, go, it will go both ways. So our students don't use English because they see it as a difficult subject. And then it will create them, develop their identity as school learner. They don't believe in themselves. They always think that, oh, I can't do that. Oh, well, I'm here. I'm now studying in English department because my parents forced me to do that, not me. English is not my favorite. See, in this stage, they have developed their identity as poor learner. And then they make frequent mistakes. And they feel ashamed because they do badly in tests. They sit next to like-minded peers. They don't have enough self-confidence to sit next to, you know, better qualified students, better qualified peers, because it will, you know, obviously, uh, it will be obviously uh, shown the quality. There's a big gap if they sit next to a better student. What they, what they like to do is they like to sit next to like-minded peers. If they are slow, they tend to choose slow, other slow students to discuss with. But what are they going to discuss? And then teacher will identify this kind of learners as slow, go back to the up there and treat them as slow learners. And they start hating the subject. So as the loop goes all around, it will go like that. And if you see from cultural capital, our students lack of cultural capital and it will pre uh, prevent them from identifying with language and its users. And lack of social and economic capital denies the opportunities to learn English outside school. It's really, 
It's really, um, what is it? Contrast with the positive feedback we saw previously. Okay, I'm not going to spend much time talking about Matthew effect because this Matthew effect uh, like can consume uh, or uh, needs one session to discuss about. So just at least now you know what Matthew effect is and how it can, it can be applied in our own classroom. Okay, now let's jump into the challenges. There are many challenges or problems or uh, troubles, whatever, you name it. But basically something which uh, can be burden for us in, uh, in dealing with online learning. The first one is lack of participation in virtual classroom. Have you ever experienced talking to the screen itself? I mean, we can say there are many students, like now there are 326, 25 participants in this room, minus me, so 200, 324. But uh, it feels like when I'm teaching, I'm talking to my students, no response at all. It feels like I'm talking to the screen. What's the difference uh, between talking to my students online and talking to the wall or talking to my hand, right? So why? Because there's lack of participation in virtual classroom. They are not under pressure uh, or they are not feel ashamed. I'm talking about our students to turn off the camera and uh, some of them might be fall asleep. And then the second one is classroom without interruption. Yeah, because lack of participation, meaning that no interruption. Uh, in the classroom. We talk for, let's say one hour, two hours, and then yes, that's it. Bye-bye, class dismissed. Everyone leaves the room. Online teaching and learning methods can be intimidating for some people. Yes, in an online classroom, our teaching style sometimes can get lost in translation. So some people are being intimidated by online modes. Another challenge, uh, lack of self-discipline. It's, it's, uh, I think it's normal because we can't monitor them face to face, but face to screen. So uh, they, don't think, they don't think that self-discipline is very important. And there are distractions during online classes. You're teaching, you're talking to your students and when she or he is unmuted him or herself, suddenly the voice of the mom from the kitchen shouting out loud. And it's one kind of distraction. And yeah, no, almost no room for feedback. It's hard for you to make time to give your students feedback. Uh, you maybe you can give feedback, but only in general, or you make it in a in a very uh, short way. Too much parents' involvement. We as teachers, we do need parents to get involved and in helping their children during the uh, teaching and learning process, online teaching and learning process. But too much parents' involvement is distracting as well. Okay, what does everyone expect? What do we expect? What do I expect? What do you expect? Well, I believe that everyone, um, let's say when we were in late 2021, everyone expected that we could go back to school normally in a very normal way in 2022. And yes, the condition has been a bit better since January 2022, but now it's getting worse again, a bit worse, because uh, the worst, the peak one was in, uh, I guess, last year, early last year. Uh, but now it's, yeah, it's going, 
uh, worse again. So we go back to online school. So uh, there is a gap between what we expect and what the reality is. And we do expect that we can have effective teaching and learning. In fact, we still can't, at least for this time, for this moment. Physical interaction with other peers and teachers. Students, I think uh, this is what you want. This is what you expect. That you, can, you can have a physical interaction with your other friends and teachers, especially for those who are now, I think, in the fourth, uh, second and fourth semester. Because starting uh, from the time when you enter the campus, uh, it was still closed, right? So I don't know whether or not you, you are now having the chance to uh, have a kind of physical interaction with your other peers. Student self-discipline. Uh, we talked about it before. And then if we come to the reality, it comes to reality, we still have no control over students. Uh, teacher talking time versus student talking time. We talk a lot. Even, even though uh, we do want them to talk, we do want our students to dominate the talk in the classroom, but still we can't deal with that. We can't force them to do it online. I think uh, the story is going to be different. If we made them offline, but we can't, we can't do anything about it. We still have to deal with that. And then time consuming. Online teaching is time consuming. Uh, technical problem is the main issue. We still have to, you know, deal with all technical stuff before uh, coming to the real teaching. And then you are in the middle of your teaching process and suddenly the connection is disconnected and something like that. No time for feedback, yeah, that's uh, the major problem. Students' reaction cannot be clearly seen. Uh, they are, well, whether they're making up their faces towards you or uh, they're nodding their, ha their head or they're giving like funny reaction to uh, your instruction, nobody knows if they can resolve. And students still have the struggle with connection, not only students, also teachers, also me, myself. No, I'm still struggling with my connection in rainy season particularly. Okay, this is a, a kind of bonus thing for uh, students to be able to know, to be able to identify what type of, uh, what type of learner you are. According to Field Dark, there are four learner types. The first one is achievers, suckers, ball droppers, and goats. Well, uh, you might, you might uh, haven't heard about these types, but uh, looking at the words, you can assume what kind of learner your students are. Starting from achievers. Uh, if we have achievers in our classroom, meaning that we have excellent academic skills there. So if students, if you have excellent academic skills, meaning that you are a teacher, okay? And as teachers, or we, because I'm including myself in this thing, uh, we tend to wish that we had more achievers in our class, right? It's going to make our teaching and learning process easier. And then the second type is faster. Well, the level of the level of academic skill of pastors is from moderate to high level. I mean, even pastors uh, are not the skill. I'm talking about the skill. Even pastors skills are not as excellent as achievers, but they are hard workers. So if you are 
uh, if you are hard workers, if you are hard working in the classroom, even if you're not as excellent as your other students, then you can put yourself in class group. And the third one is ball droppers. Ball droppers are usually motivated, but there's a big but in here. They're motivated only after the fact that they miss the task, they fail to pass, they miss the deadline, and so on and so forth. So they have to be hard first. They have to, they have to, um, they have to learn the lesson in hard way. So if they pass all the subjects, they, they are putting themselves in comfort zone, but they're going to start making ever. They're going to start motivate themselves after they fail a subject, for example. So uh, my dear students, if you are one of this, then you are a ball dropper. And the last one is ghost. You know what ghost is, right? Ghost is ghost. You can't see ghost. So even in there in your classroom, but they're just like ghosts. You can't see them. You can't see their existence. Uh, this, this type of student, uh, they can register themselves for class, but nothing, really nothing is registering in their brain. So that's why we call this type of student ghost or this type of learner ghost. And uh, usually they have, this type of students have poor academic skills and they have no motivation at all. So, Decide yourself which one is which one which one is yours which one belongs to you and extra uh, what is it uh, recommendations suggestions for students it's better for you to avoid these list of things better for you not to turn off your microphone or camera well your microphone if you your teacher asks you to do so. Someone is talking or your teacher is talking, it's better for you to turn off your microphone. But if they ask you to say something, it's better for you not to turn off your microphone, not to turn off your camera, especially among students who dislike having their faces on the chat. Okay, and then the second one, please avoid repeatedly leaving the class and signing back in. Uh, propose, uh, propose okay? If it's because of your network, if it's because of your being kicked out, that's fine. But if you do that on third approach, please don't do that. Please avoid leaving the camera on, but physically you leave the room, okay? You turn on your camera and then you're out of time. Go to the toilet, you go to the kitchen to have your lunch, your dinner. Please avoid doing that. Please avoid refusing to speak at all, even when your teacher asks you to do so. For example, uh, if I ask Vanessa something, uh, Vanessa, are you doing okay? Please avoid refusing to speak at all. At least you give response to your teacher or your lecture. And then avoid refusing to do activities and good work. Avoid throwing a feet on camera, banging the microphone to burst everyone else's eardrums or yelling. It's not really polite. Uh, avoid not signing into the class until 30 minutes after the class starts. So don't be late. Even it's online class, but you are not expected to come late in the classroom. And uh, for this, this, I think it's a very important one, avoid sending rude uh, images in chat room because your lectures, your teachers will see that as well. Okay, now back to the problems I mentioned previously, and here are the solutions. Uh, we as teachers have to have one clear aim. Well, we don't have uh, we don't have to we don't have to put much target on this. We don't have to put more than one aim because it's too big in online class. It's too far to be achieved only one clear simple aim and make sure that we can achieve them by the end of our lesson and then during the online lesson during the online teaching and learning process it's better for us 
to keep the lesson simple. Because no use to make things complicated. Our students cannot, cannot deal with that. So it's better for us to make things simple, but it's, it's, it's possible for our students to achieve the goal, to get the lesson, to understand what we teach them. And uh, if we want to give them activities, make sure that uh, they are familiar with those activities, not totally new to them. Otherwise, they still need time or it still takes time to adapt with those kind of activities and it's time consuming. Better check and double check students understanding. You might want to use uh, your first language, might you use Bahasa Indonesia in this case, to make sure that we get the message across. So if we give our instruction, if we give our explanation in English, uh, we have to make sure that our students understand, our students really understand what we are talking. Our students really understand what we are explaining by using Bahasa Indonesia, if it's necessary for us to do that. Because if we ask them in English, okay, do you understand? Guys, am I making myself clear? And all of them will say, yes, ma'am. Or they will just nod their head. If not, keep quiet at all. So make sure that, excuse me, make sure that everyone, each and every one of your students understand well every single thing that you deliver. A written form instruction. You need to provide written form instruction as well, not only oral form, because they might miss particular parts of it. You give instruction A, and because they don't understand, they will do another thing. So it's better for you to give oral form, but also provide written form. You need to involve, involve students and keep them engaged in the teaching and learning process. I know this is hard. Even me, myself, uh, have been experiencing these kind of problems for almost two years, almost two years, I think. How to get my students to, uh, to how to get them engaged and uh, participate in my teaching process. And it's still a big homework for me. But as teachers, we're all in one, right? We can do all things. Our students always see us as perfect. So we can't give up with them. We have to always find a way out to these problems. Uh, if it's necessary, it's better for us to create a breakout room. If you have this size class, create breakout room to make like small group discussion. You need to grab students' attention by uh, any particular thing, particular and interesting thing. So yeah. Now let me move to my conclusion. The first one is all of us. We have to admit that all of us complain uh, about online learning, online teaching and learning. But one thing we have to remember is nothing good can be gained from compliance. What we have to do is, is, is better for us to find the right solution of the problem in order to be able to motivate not only our students, but also motivate ourselves. To make things better. And then the second one is that virtual learning, they have its limitation in this and thousands of problems, thousands and thousands of problems which still exist until now. However, the art of teaching and learning can be only shaped if we do it with heart. We have to teach with heart. And I believe that if we are, if we are leveled as teachers now, it means that we always do things with heart. Okay, so we can handle things, easily handle things. The question is not, how can EFL teachers help their students to learn online? Teachers always ask this kind of question. How can we help our students to learn online? But to me, that's not the question. The real question is, how can EFL teachers help each other to be successful in teaching online? 
we need to help each other. We need to support each other to be successful for the successful of our students. And the last one, and I think uh, to me, this is the most interesting one. I quote this from Sir Isaac Newton. And it, to me, it's a very wonderful quote. If I've seen further than others, it is by standing up on the shoulders of giants. Well, uh, what these quotes mean is we as teachers, we have to stand on experts, on other lecturers, on seniors, on other researchers' shoulders in order to be able to see further, in order to understand something more in order to, let's say, the practical example is in order to go beyond our textbook, okay? And then at the same time, teachers have to prepare after standing on the shoulders of other seniors, other experts, we also have to prepare our shoulders to be stood on by our students to make them able to see further things ahead. So that's why I think, or that's why to me that uh, to me this quote is is uh, what is it? It's very suitable for our condition now that we have to work together. We have to walk hand in hand in order to make things better. So yeah, I guess that's it for now. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any question, I'll be more than happy to discuss it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Ibu Santri. Uh, this is very interesting for us uh, that you uh, sp uh, spoke to us uh, that COVID-19, yeah, we have to learn, uh, get, uh, we have to learn something. We have to adapt the digital learning and then we, uh, online learnings uh, has a problem for everyone, especially internet access and then we stressful because we usually learn to uh, face by face yeah, uh, as a conventional um, way to learn English. But uh, Ibu, what do you think about uh, uh, that students uh, still don't want to learn with their parents, especially? Uh, and then uh, um, what about uh, the teachers also uh, can uh, make uh, one aim and then uh, grab the student's attention. Uh, what do you think about that, Ibu? Uh, all right, uh, Eka. Uh, I'm trying to respond. The first one is that students do not want to work with their parents. Uh, I think that's normal, especially for for our students of university nowadays. They've grown up, so they don't want to, you know, it's a kind of, they don't want to, uh, to discuss something with their parents. They don't want to show their parents that they, they, they do need them in solving other problems. And uh, teenagers are like that, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I have a ne nephew here and uh, he's a university student. Even he's one of my students in the classroom. I'm teaching him actually. And he, he, he usually does the work that is in fact given by me as a lecturer. Never ever once he wants to discuss with me. So I think that that's the nature of teenager nowadays. It's very different with kids. Uh, our elementary, junior high school students still want to keep in touch with the parents. They want to discuss and really rely on their parents in this case. But not our students in university because of their ages. And I don't know, maybe, uh, uh, what is it? Kaana, I think can explain this better because her background is uh, psychology, right? But I think it, 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 uh, yeah. it has much relationship 
with uh, their psychological aspect. They want to be seen as an independent learner. That's, that's the key issue. So, well, in, in, um, in dealing with this, I give you an example in my class because I'm teaching speaking. If I want them to discuss with their parents, I want them to uh, talk to their parents that I have to design a task that make it possible for them to be able to do only by discussing with their parents. For example, I'm giving their task, uh, which is related to their family tree, like it or not, they have to discuss with their parents because only their parents know about it, right? They can't discuss with their yeah. other peers because their other peers can, can, uh, cannot answer the question. They don't know or they know nothing about uh, each and every one family tree. So that's one of the examples. Uh, we, it's better for us. If we want them to work together with the parents, it's from us. We have to design a particular work or particular task that make it possible for them to be able to discuss or to talk to the family. And then, uh, what's the other one, Paika? Sorry, I forgot. Uh, yeah. Students do not work with their parents. And then the other one, can you please remind me again, what's the other one, Paika? Uh, that the students uh, grab our, uh, one aim, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, uh, well, why did I say it's better for teachers to have only one A and oh, one simple A? Because all of us know that uh, it's not easy, or at least it's not teaching online, it's not as easy as teaching online, right? Uh, even when I'm teaching online, I don't usually put so much target in it. Let's say if my topic is about small talk, my target is, okay, by the end of this lesson, at least my students know how to respond to spontaneous questions. That's it. So that's one simple aim or one simple target that I want my students to achieve after the end of the lesson. If I put many targets, if I put many aims, then it's going to be difficult for my students to achieve yeah. because, because of uh, limited of time and then limited of the resources and so on and so forth, let alone uh, having online tasks like this. <laughs> That's why it's better for us to have only small targets, one small target, one simple target, but we can make sure that by the end of the lesson, our students can achieve that particular target. Because we're going to be stressed out if we don't hit the target after the lesson, right? So that's why to avoid that kind of thing, it's better for us to go like step by step, one aim at a time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's, that's for me, by that. Uh, yeah, uh, I remind something that, uh... Uh, that someone uh, or student uh, maybe like for a semantic or only semantic and then uh, only for teaching and then that's maybe that's one aim for us maybe. but uh, how do you uh, do you have any strategy how to push our students <laughs> uh, uh, response during virtual learning and then to re uh, do require them to open the, the camera because when we teach, yeah, you, uh, we and then sometimes or often uh, face the students uh, when uh, we ask something and then the students is only silence and then there's no camera and then uh, who am I teaching for? <laughs> yeah, that happens, Paika. Mm -hmm. I experience and I think uh, many teachers out there experience that kind of thing. In my case, I usually personalize personalize them like I call names for example if I ask questions then I'll call names <clears throat> Fanisa please answer my question like that's one of the examples like it or not he or she uh, will have to do that mm -hmm. and it's my rule 
in my online class that whenever you're talking, your camera has to be on. Some of them will give excuse that, ma'am, my bandwidth is low. I can't open my camera. My camera cannot be turned on because I'm going to be disconnected. Then I'll say, okay, try it on first. If you're being kicked out of the room, then I'll admit you again. But at least now turn your camera off. If you are disconnected, trust me, I'm going to admit you again and again. So by pushing them, I know it's, it's um, pushing things for our students is not always good. But in this case, it works in my case. Because otherwise, well, I'm teaching speaking. And what do I expect from my students if they don't talk? Mm -hmm. I mean, the way to score them only by talking, right? By assessing yes. their speaking skill. But if they just keep quiet all the time, what should I score? So that's why I keep on pushing them to talk or I give them uh, assigned tasks. Like it or not, they have to do that. They have to do the present individually uh, presentation. So I will call their names one by one. Even let's say that's in, the, in that case, I admit that it's a kind of time consuming, but in order to make them talk, I'd rather doing that rather than, you know, spending time for nothing uh, in front of the screen. 50 students in my classroom, I have to call their names one by one uh, to come to the screen and start doing their presentation. And it works. Mm. But even though like some of them just speak for one or two minutes, I don't care as long as you want to speak. Because otherwise I feel like I talk alone. I mentioned before, right? What's the difference between talking to you on screen, uh, being quiet, than talking to my own hand? I mean, no response. And in that case, I do want my students to give me a response. If they don't give response for my greetings, like, okay, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? And they just quiet. I will keep on asking them for even 10 times. <laughs> I feel like I have to respond. Okay. Guys, can you hear me? Okay, are you doing okay? Are you doing all right? How are you? They keep quiet, I keep on repeating. Time consuming, I know. But yeah, that's the only way to get them talk. They will feel like, okay, it's time for me to talk. It's time for me to give response. Otherwise, she will keep on asking us for the rest of the day. And yeah. They get used to it until now. Uh, but, uh, what about uh, learning by WhatsApp? Do you, uh, what do you think about uh, learning by WhatsApp? Uh, well, I don't usually do that. Uh, I have a group. I have my students being put in a group for my particular, for my subject. But it's just for a kind of uh, short notice. A short announcement for me. And if I, by any means, I can't attend a class, I can't teach them, uh, then I usually send them instructions for the task. And in that way, I use WhatsApp. Group. But in teaching, mm -hmm. never ever I use WhatsApp. Usually, senior teachers, mm -hmm. because they well, I, I uh, mentioned before, right? They don't have enough skills in dealing with technical, uh, technical issues. So they just teach by using WhatsApp. But yeah, no explanation, right? How can you explain by using WhatsApp? And then uh, in this case, uh, we have to blend it, yeah. Uh, and then sometimes uh, I feel like maybe it's uh, like a selfish maybe, but I do now. Uh, I like uh, virtual learning also because virtual learning is make something make me what is it? What is it? Uh, productive, yeah, productive to what is it? And then for me to write something and then to make something and then is it uh, good or no? Point, right? Positive, negative. Uh, nothing in this world only has positive parts, always has negative as well. 
Mm -hmm. So we are we are uh, we were just talking about negative side of online learning. We haven't talked about yeah, or we haven't discussed about positive side. Has positive side as well. Uh, looking from looking from its simplicity, we can teach anywhere, anytime. Wow! Uh, like we can ask them to do something while doing on other things, as you mentioned before. Uh, you have you have uh, much time working on your uh, research things, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes, in that case, I do admit that is is uh, what is it? It's more effective for us. But when we are talking about the quality, I don't think that online learning is better because what we were discussing before, we were discussing about the quality and. The and I think it, it doesn't work really well when we were doing it online. But if we are talking about online learning related to uh, to its uh, simplicity, then I think, yes, uh, there's a positive effect. We still have, like, uh, we can save time at least. We don't have to travel from home to uh, campus and uh, the time can be used for doing something else, for writing, for researching, for publishing, and so on and so forth. So what is your current research to do? Uh, I'm now working on feedback, uh, types of feedback given by lecturers to students. I'm looking at the opinion, or I'm looking at uh, what is it? Um, the students' ideas. How the students see the lecture's feedback towards improvement, towards the motivation. So, uh, I'm currently working on it. I haven't finished my writing yet, but hopefully, uh, in the near time, I can finish it. I don't know. It's just, you know, uh, the mood is just on and off. On and off. Sometimes I'm in a very good mood in con I continue my writing. Sometimes I'm in a very bad mood. I have to deal with my students. Then, yeah, I leave all my writing work behind. So I, I still can't finish it. Ibu, we have a question. And okay. From any Damayanti. Uh, from English major question today, most of question uh, students, uh, most of students still need to adapt with online learning. What do you think about? Oh, for example, wait. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, what is it? Because my okay. Uh, what do you think about assessing students with a lot of tasks? Is it okay for them? A lot okay. of tasks. Yeah, I can say it's from any, right? Uh, is any a student of English department? Yeah. Okay. And I can I can say or I can feel from her question that that's the voice of a student. Uh, yeah. And I think she can represent all students out there with, uh, with overload work from lecturers or teachers. Uh, yeah, what do you think about assessing students with a lot of tasks? Is okay for them? If you ask me as a lecturer, then I say it is okay for them. Then uh, because by doing all the tasks, you know the aim of work, working on a task, right? Task and assignment are two different things. Uh, I, I don't want to discuss it more here because it's not a topic to be delivered today. It's, it needs another session. But for you to know that task assignment exercises, they're different. If you're talking about tasks, you adopt, you're talking about uh, deeper things to do by students. You should have a very deep aim. And uh, if you have lots and lots of tasks to do, why I say it's good for you, because you can learn a lot from the tasks you're working on. You learn independently. That's what I'm saying. 
but from the side of students, I can feel you, okay? What do you think about the staffing students with a lot of cars? Uh, I can say it's not really okay. I, again, it's from the side of students. It's not really okay because students will not focus on working on their task because they will rush in doing things, if you know what I mean. They, they are not really focusing on doing the task. They will do just for the sake of submitting it, not for the sake of really uh, understanding what they are doing. So again, any two standing here, uh, from from lecture side, I have to say that it is really okay. Because lectures usually give half the students with clear aim to make you uh, to make you perform better in doing things in an independent way. Of but from the side of a student. As I said previously, I can feel you. And I said, no, it's not really okay. Because uh, they have like lack of time to do the work. They won't focus. They won't concentrate on doing the task. So that's do, from me, Annie. Uh, do you have any question participants and then dear participants? Uh, please your, raise your hand, yeah? If you have any question, uh, Ibu, I want to uh, ask you as a personal, yeah, Ibu. Yeah. Uh, I read uh, your uh, presentation, and then there is a what type of learner you are, and then I want to ask you uh, what type of learner you are. <laughs> well, oh, I have to think back to the last time I was a student was in 20, 2010, if I'm not mistaken, when I did my PhD. And at the time, I didn't sit in the classroom. I did the whole things uh, in the research field. So 100% I did in research field. Uh, I don't know, let me think. I think uh, for sure, at the time, I wasn't a ghost for sure. Uh, I can guarantee that. And I don't think I was also a ball dropper. Uh, a tasker, maybe, because I don't want to level myself as an excellent one. So I don't think I'm a, an achiever. Well, the moderated one, I guess. I'm a pastor. If you insist that I should mention, <laughs> I think I'm a pastor. But when I was in undergraduate level, like uh, all of the students here, wow, long time ago, I, I think I could level myself or I could see myself as ball droppers. Oh. Because I thought everything was easy until I got stumble and fall. <clears throat> until I got stumble and fall, or I uh, failed in a subject, uh, I would never, ever uh, make any effort. I made effort only, only if I saw. Uh, troubles coming towards me. Yeah, that 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 was me many years ago when I did my when I did my undergraduate study. Quite interesting. But, but uh, things change because when I did my master's degree or even my PhD, I couldn't do things like that. Otherwise, I couldn't, otherwise I couldn't finish my study, right? So yeah. Faster. Okay, but, uh, we have a questioner here, and then Pa Abdu. Uh, please, Pabdu. Oh, I can read here. Pabdu, right? Yeah. Can you please 
of learning into Hello Miss Andri. Yeah. Hello Pa Apu. Hello Miss Andri. So it was really good presentation from you. Uh, uh, I joined the webinar earlier and then I got some of the points from the Matthew effects yeah, that you described uh, from your presentations. That in the, in the situation that we are having uh, for our distant learning, for online learning, uh, we might uh, see that the students who are very good performer would be, uh, become the best students in this uh, learning situation. But unlike with the, the worst performer, they are getting worse and worse uh, for the student who join the learning, uh, the distant learning. And then, and then I think about uh, SDL. Uh, which is it is a student directed uh, learning so it is it is suit for the student to to have uh, another more uh, another learning model which is implemented by the lecturers or by teachers by applying sdl model which is it is student directed learning so they are uh, autonomously can learn by themselves and then they can have their uh, learning uh, discovery and then they can have uh, their freedom for learning. So can we implement that? Uh, if, uh, because we are talking about some of the challenges that we have, maybe if we have like online learning with the ruler area, we cannot uh, grab their attention. And then with the student, we with a very low uh, economy uh, from the background of the family, we cannot have their, uh, maybe their good performance uh, from their devices. And what if we shift uh, this learning into sub-directed learning? Is it suit for the students, for the for the learning situ the situation that we are having now? Okay, thank you for the question, uh, Abdul. Uh, when we are talking about self-directed learning, we are talking about based on teacher's instruction. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think it can be applied to all level of students if the situation, uh, situation the requirement for having online class uh, and teachers want to want to uh, shift to SEL. Uh, teacher, teachers can always do that, but again, it's it's a little bit difficult. Well, again, my 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 model is difficult. Doesn't always mean impossible, but it's a little bit difficult to monitor. Uh, we can what we can do is just to look at their progress okay. and the uh, how to measure is another important thing to think about. And my suggestion is when we are. When we are directed to EDL, uh, SEL or self-directed learning, it's better for us to use PBLT, task-based uh, learning teaching, uh, by giving them tasks. When we're, again, when we're talking about tasks, we're talking about uh, what we want them to get. And so we don't design, we don't design tasks with no aim, but we have to define tasks with particular aims that we really want our students to achieve. I think by doing this, if we work hard as teachers and our students can do well in, uh, in going through their uh, self-directed learning, things are possible to be achieved. So that's, that's, that's possible, we can do that. And the level, the level can be, uh, well, I think any level can do that. It depends on the condition. It's, but my suggestion is, well, it's, it's, it's a friendly suggestion anyway, is if we still, uh, if, if we see it possible to conduct an online meeting, then it's better for us to do that. But if, if it's not possible for us to do that, then yes, SEL is the option. Okay, thank you, Miss Andre. I think uh, I got your answers. Maybe we can diagnose the students' needs and also the learning objective, and then we can yes. simplify the 
the learning outcomes and what the student will get after the learning. Yeah. And then yeah, we can yeah. design for the self-directed learning. Uh, yeah, because yeah. the problem that we are having actually, uh, not only the devices, I think I, I, I talk to my student that our learning situation will last forever. <laughs> and I think there will be no excuses and then there will be no reasons. Yeah. <laughs> and there will be no reason that we are uh, we are having uh, this is uh, this is not a new normal. So it become a uh, uh, it become a habits and uh, our adaptation uh, skills should uh, adapt to the learning sure. situations uh, yeah. we are having. Okay, thank you Miss Andre. You're welcome. Uh, what I'm going to say is the online learning uh, we will still we will still exist forever and ever. Uh, from now on, uh, from even 2019 until I don't know, like you say, pa, like you say, pa, Abu, maybe forever and ever. So even if even if no more pandemic, still we're gonna use online learning in hybrid mode. I think we will no longer live online mode. Thank you for the question, Pak Abdul. Okay, and then the la, uh, the next, uh, Ibu Ivi Imania. Please, Ibu, uh, unmute, please. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Pan. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm happy for having this uh, webinar. Uh, your today. voice is, can you, can you make uh, it louder? I can't hear you clearly. Um, okay, what about this one? Can you hear my voice? Still small, hello? Can you hear the voice? Can you hear the voice? Can you hear the voice? Pass. Pak can you hear yeah. my voice? Yeah, okay. the voice. Perhaps Bu Santri cannot hear my voice. Ibu Santri? Uh, Hello. <laughs> Is it clear? Is it clear? Uh, Ibu Santri, uh, we can't yeah. hear you. Yes. Okay, Ibu, if we... Okay. <laughs> yeah, I hope uh, Ibu Santri can hear my voice, yeah. Okay, uh, perhaps if... Mm, what is it talking about too many tasks to do for our students yeah i am as a lecturer uh, not only what is it it's perhaps it's not only students problem but also the lecturer's problem yeah uh, maybe it's quite challenging for us as the lecturer why uh, the lecturer gives a lot of tasks to our students in this uh, online teaching and learning. Um, I, I guess, uh, what is it? Um, if it, it's best my uh, experience, yeah, at my classroom activity, um, I have ever, uh, what is it? Um, I, 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 give, uh, I give my students no pass, yeah, at the time. But then uh, when I review uh, in the next, uh, classroom activity when I review the material none of them uh, read uh, the materials of mine yeah <laughs> so that's why <laughs> yeah, Pak Eka Ugi, uh, love, yeah. Uh, that's why uh, it's confusing yeah for the lecturer perhaps it's uh, what is it uh, quite happy for the students not pass from the lecturer but then when we review the materials uh, none of them uh, already read the materials, yeah. So that's why uh, perhaps it's uh, quite challenging for us as a lecturer um, if we have uh, this, what is it, uh, like a Zoom meeting and then um, when we review the materials and then we have not passed uh, to, uh, 
we have uh, what is it we have no task to them yeah to do so at least they uh, what is it they didn't read the materials at all so that's why uh, uh, what is it we need to actually as a lecturer we need to adapt the synchronous and asynchronous activity yeah that's why uh, not only do activity but also we adapt for learning management system uh, that we already developed so that's why uh, perhaps uh, the, the students feel uh, what is it okay too many tasks for us but then uh, how we can assess you as a student if we or we, how we can review the students if we uh, don't have uh, any task yeah to do for the students to do that's why uh, for me uh, actually in my classroom activity i all uh, uh, i believe that uh, it happens to all the lecturers here uh, at least we need to give uh, for example, not only tasks, but also uh, like the uh, forum discussions. We need, to, we need to give questions, yeah, for our students, and then the, our students need to uh, respond to our uh, forum uh, in asynchronous activity. So that's why, uh, dear students, yeah, uh, actually uh, the task uh, that. Uh, we give to you is not for uh, what is it force the students or give the students uh, responsibility yeah that's uh, why uh, we give a task for our students as a, what is it to make them as a, uh, perhaps uh, the same with pa pa abdu yeah self directed learning so that's why uh, we need to adopt that uh, SBL or uh, Bu Tantri has said before TBLT, yeah, task-based learning teaching. So that's why uh, here uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, only challenging for us as a lecturer, but also challenging for our students, yeah, because this is uh, it, it, it's new in Indonesia, yeah, it, it, it's new for online learning. And then, of course, it's new for uh, University of Womadia too, yeah, for adapting this online teaching and learning. So that's why I hope uh, in the future uh, we can, uh, what is it, develop our or adapt uh, any teaching strategies or teaching methods that appropriate for uh, the level, uh, not the level, the types of our learners uh, are, yeah. Perhaps that, that's all my experience yeah, in this country. I hope, uh, uh, I believe that it happens to, to other classroom activity, yeah, to online teaching and learning process. Okay, thank you, Pak Ekong. Mm. Thank you, Busantri. Uh, perhaps, uh, do you have any, uh, what is it, Busantri? Uh, any, uh, what is it, suggestion for, for, for us and as a letter to what, uh, what types of uh, teaching strategies or teaching methods that appropriate for any level of uh, any type of our our learners are? Have you any suggestion to ask? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Ibu Ivi, uh, and then Ibu Santri. Uh, this is about a task and then forum discussion and then uh, what it. Okay, and then the question is about uh, around yeah around uh, task and forum discussion. When we uh, when the students uh, maybe like a, like a stressful or maybe uh, it's like a hard and then uh, if we, if we uh, made a forum discussion to yeah uh, make an alternative uh, for for uh, the students because the students uh, didn't read. Yeah, didn't read the material. And then this is why the forum discussion is uh, uh, the alternative way how to manage the class. Okay, Ibu. Uh, Ibu Santri. Uh, 
you are unaudible. Ibu? Maybe uh, you can unplug your uh, uh, headphone. Uh, no. Uh, uh, your sound, uh, your, you are unaudible. Mm, no, Ibu, we can't still hear you. Maybe someone here, do you know this problem? <laughs> uh, you can share uh, with us. Maybe you can uh, click your um, mute like a mute and then select the microphone book. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can okay. hear you. Thank you. Wow, technology. Yeah. See? This, <laughs> That's is <one> right. of, <laughs> this is one of the main challenging one in online yeah. system. <laughs> and that happens, that happens during our teaching learning online. We always deal with this thing. And it, 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 it's time consuming, I'm telling you. My goodness. I'm stressed out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, hear it really well but what i uh what i could get uh is she was talking about tasks given to students and then most of them didn't get the instruction correctly and in this case discussion forum is needed right yeah. to learning management system if i'm not mistaken yeah but i was trying hard to to listen to the unclear voice while reading her lips at the same time, so <laughs> hopefully I'm, I'm not getting things wrong. And then uh, the question from Ibuif is, it's not really a question, it's just uh, that she wanted me to give suggestion to, uh, what is it, other, other teachers or lecturers related to online learning, am I right? Yeah, Ibu, uh, Ibu Ifi said, uh, when the students uh, didn't uh, read the material and then uh, uh, they have to make a task and then she uh, made a forum discussion to uh, manage the classroom and then to make them better. It's, it's a very good, it's a very good idea. I mean, by having a discussion forum, by having a forum, you will provide a written instruction like i mentioned previously right because if we only give them oral instruction some of them might uh, some of them might uh misunderstand our instruction and they might do different things so we need to give them a forum to discuss things further in order to make them understand more uh, what is it? But in short, they don't get misled by our instruction because they misunderstand what our instruction is. This misunderstand uh, is the challenges, yeah, book. And then yeah. 
Okay, and then we have. Uh, do you have any uh, the yeah the summary, ibu? Uh, because this forum I have I had a message from uh, Vanessa Duiana uh, that we have to close. Uh, we have to, uh, li uh, limit time here. Do you have any summary? Summary. Well, uh, what I'd like to say as my closing remark is I, I will quote again uh, from Sir Isaac Newton that if you sin further than others, it's only by standing up on the shoulders of giants. So please work together, walk hand in hand to have a kind of collaboration to create, uh, to create a better condition of teaching and learning in order to have good output. Yeah, I think that's all for me. Okay, thank you very much, Ibu Santri Jahimo. It's very uh, happy we have you here. And then, okay, uh, guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and then dear students, uh, uh, thank you very much for your attention here. And then I uh, will yeah, uh, give uh, this forum to Vanessa Duiana. Thank you very much to Mr. Taugusu Tikno M. Hong, who has led the presentation, and Ms. Antri E.P. Jahimo, STDM App Linguistic PhD, for the amazing presentation, Martial's Day. Before we start the next event, English Education Study Program would like to thank Ibu Santri and please accept the token of appreciation from Mr. Muhammad Iqbal Firdaus M. Hum as a head of English Education Study Program. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for uh, MC Vanessa. Uh, what a presentation from Ibu Santri, our first keynote speaker today in our event. Uh, my gratitude to all of you participants, uh, usually, uh, especially for the committee, all the lecturers, all the committee from the student association uh, very helpful in this event um, the gratitude especially for the miss uh, for the for miss uh, santri uh, for giving us a lot of new point of view in teaching and learning process during pandemic hopefully um, knowledge that delivered today will Excuse me, Pa. Hello. Uh, maybe Hello. you can close your microphone. Hello. Uh, close your microphone, Pa. Close my. Yeah. What do you your mean? your microphone. Closer. Yeah. Sorry. Closer. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Uh, hello? Is it clear enough now? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, maybe I should <laughs> start from the first year because you didn't hear what I say before. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My gratitude to all of you that attend in this uh, event, especially for Mrs. Uh, Santri, who has delivered uh, the material. And it's very inspiring for all of us in here how to get a point of view in uh, teaching and learning process during pandemic. Hopefully, uh, all of students, uh, lecturers, teachers that attend in here, 
uh, get inspired uh, with the knowledge that I've shared with us. And also I will say thank you to all the participants, committee, especially committee from the student association uh, who are very helpful in uh, conducting this uh, event. And uh, as a, our appreciation to Miss Santri, uh, I'd like to give the certificate of, of appreciation as a keynote speaker for today's event. And then the certificate will be directly uh, sent to Mrs. Santri after this. Uh, thank you for joining us and sharing uh, your knowledge book. Uh, hopefully uh, next event, uh, you are able to join with us again because uh, this event will be conducting uh, annually. I think that's all that I can say today. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much to Mr. Muhammad Iqbal Firdaus M. Hum and Ms. Hunter E. P. Jahimo, SPD, MAPP, Linguistic PhD for the amazing presentation module today. Thank you for the insight knowledge during this webinar, Ms. Santri Ipijahimo. Thank you very much to Mr. Reka Ogisutik no M. Kung, who has led the presentation, and Ms. Santri Ipi Jahimo, SPD, MIPP, Linguistic, PhD, for the amazing presentation materials today. And to all the participants, link for the attendance list will be shared later on. Please be patient and enjoy the webinar. And next, step on to the following agenda. We would like to invite Sister Zihni Kharinatamami as moderator who will guide the next presentation. To Sister Zihni Kharinatamami, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Panisa, the Master of Ceremony. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Please, let me introduce myself first. My name is Zini Khairina Tamami from the English Education Major, University of Muhammadiyah Tangerang, and I am honored to have the chance to be one of the moderators of this English Festival 2022 webinar today. First of all, I would like to welcome all of the audience to this presentation. In this special occasion, we would like to have a presentation about key factors affecting individuals' online learning readiness the role of self-directed learning, metacognition, and 21st century skills. And I will explain some rules that need to be followed so that our presentation today will go effectively. The question and answer session will be held after the presentation, and the maximum number of questions is the questions per session. The session itself will be, uh, will be according to the time. Before the presentation begins, I would like to introduce our speaker for today's occasion. He is Mr. Udi Samanhudi, PhD. He got his doctorate in TESOL and Applied Linguistics, Queen's University, Belfast, UK. He is the head of International Office Lecturer and Researcher in TESOL and Applied Linguistics. And he is a Senior English Lecturer in Sultan Agung Tirtayasa State University, Banten. He teaches courses English for academic purposes, assessment in ELT, and English speaking skills in English education department. In this occasion, he will present about 
key vectors affecting individuals' online learning readiness, the role of self-directed learning, metacognition, and 21st century skills in today's webinar. For the host, I would like to ask for your help to share the screen of the presentation slides. All right, without any further ado, I would like to welcome our speaker, Mr. Udi Samanhudi, PhD. The stage is yours. Thank you very much. A virtual stage. <laughs> yeah, always is, is, is virtual this time. Yeah, it's very interesting. Right, Zihni, thank you very much uh, for such um, comprehensive, comprehensive introductions about myself. I'm really honored to be part of this uh, event, the English Festival. Is, sorry, is, is my, my voice audible? Yes, is it it's clear? Audible. Yes, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Good, thank you very much, Bapak Ibu. I'm very honored to be here uh, sharing about online learning in general. In particular, we will try to, to see and to <clears throat> discuss some key factors in helping learners to stay motivated while uh, having an online learning practice. Can I say screen or from the committee will help with the screen? Let, let me try to, to share if I'm already Right. Okay, so I think it is, is already clear now online learning is part of our life. The education system has shifted very dramatically, very quickly from conventional teaching into more online. Right, so if I say that online learning is new to every one of us here, probably not really because We've been exposed with this culture of online learning since, um, well, 10 years ago, but dramatically changing into online learning, I think, since pandemic last, last year in 2020. What is important is that most of us probably just think about how to keep going with the online learning without thinking much about what is actually the nature of uh, meaningful online learning itself. Every one of us probably still quite busy thinking about the signal. Yes, signal is part of the online learning, but remember that more, than, more important than signal itself is actually our understanding of factors that can help us as teachers or as students to keep directing ourselves into a good process of, of learning. And my focus of presentation this, this afternoon time is on three key factors that can help us to keep directing uh, and building our uh, learning goal during these uh, pandemic times. I know it's hard, but I think we need to really struggle and to cope with this. One day in the future, we will finally, I, I believe, uh, be very, very uh, friendly with, with online learning. So this would be our main mode of uh, transferring knowledge and then developing our uh, <clears throat> science uh, in, the, in the future. All right, I will not talk too much about me and <clears throat> I will not speak a lot about who I am <laughs> because the moderator has also already introduced myself. So allow me to just skip this. Right. Before we start, um, I really want to start open a short dialogue with um, participants in this, in this webinar. I'm directing you to my Padlet page, but I don't think it's not necessary. I really want now to invite one or two of you to just share with, with us your uh, experience in, in doing or in having an online learning so far, especially related to your motivation. Is it something that is so challenging so that you find that your motivation is like up and down or maybe because you are bored, you say, I don't want to learn again, I'm done. <laughs> so could I have two of you raise your hand, be volunteers and then uh, share with us your experience of learning or teaching online so far? Could be from the lecturers, from teachers or from the students. Miss moderator, maybe I need your help to invite participants to voluntarily share with us uh, the experience uh, regarding online learning okay. experience. Yeah. Uh, so uh, everyone, maybe you can tell Mr. about your experience during the online learning. You can write it, uh, you can write it through the chat box also. Yes, yes, correct, yeah. So feel free to write in the chat box or feel free to raise your hand. Unmute your microphone and then share with us. I think that would be interesting. 
to hear people's um, experience about online learning motivation, especially. Mister, can I add mine too? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, uh, my online learning experience so far is that uh, sometimes it's more comfortable because uh, of the time, of course, because uh, we can more be more flexible with the time. But uh, there's also some some problems that occurred when we are having an online class. For example, is for me, it's uh, the tasks. Sometimes uh, the lecturer gave us a task, and it's fine because uh, we can we can deal with one task. But then there's three lecturers who give us task with the same deadline, and and when it happens, it's becoming like we need to rush things. Mm. All right. Yeah. Okay. So your life is getting more complicated with different tasks from different lecturers, and those are given online. Yes. <laughs> All right. So are you having problem with your motivation? Are you feeling demotivated rather than feeling motivated while doing online learning activity so far during pandemic times? Yeah, sometimes it happens with the motivation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel so motivated and then like rush things, or but sometimes I feel like I will procrastinate anything. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's everybody's problem, procrastination. It's also part of my academic life. <laughs> right. Any, anyone else who would share the experience of uh, teaching or learning online? What about in the chat box? Do we have people saying something about the experience? No. So tired. <laughs> right okay no problem no problem so one one um sharing experience is is enough to open this um this uh this presentation so what it, what is what is important to highlight is that it's very very um it's, I, 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 I think um, it's, it's not quite rare to, to find out people complaining about online learning, okay? So they, they say that it's, it's, not, it's not interesting anymore because we are just stuck. So many students, for example, getting more and more demotivated rather than motivated because they are bored. And this is also expressed by a lot of students that I teach so far. Okay, it's, it's not about the class that is not interactive, but I think because, you know, boredom, because the eyes are too tired, because, you know, like moving from one online class to another class, all right? So that's, that's part of the dynamic of online learning, so should be no worries. Right, in the designing of this um, material, I've been much, much exposed to the ideas of uh, three important keywords that I also will discuss a lot with you. One is the um, 21st century skills, and then direct self-directed learning and metacognition. All right. In the opening, I say that most of us probably concerns with signal a lot in order to ensure the effectiveness of online learning. But remember, yes, it is important, but it is not the sole or most important element in the online learning itself. Because the focus of any learning the focus of education in general is that how we as teachers, how we as lecturers, how we as learners could achieve what we call as meaningful learning. And then these three elements will be a very, very important elements to think about and to, again, um, be, the, uh, be the central of our attention while doing an online uh, learning or an online teaching practice. So, here are our realities and here are what we, we so far um, encounter in our daily life as educators, as teachers, as uh, lecturers, yeah? and also as a student, of course. So from preschool to higher education, all students are negatively, we can underline the word negatively here, negatively affected by COVID-19 pandemics. The word negatively should be, should be accepted because it is a reality, especially in 2020 when we first 
uh, exposed with this virus, everyone was very shocking because everyone was staying home and then studying from home. Teachers are getting frustrated because all have to be started, okay? All have to be uh, have to be started, though it is something probably new for most teachers in our country, Indonesia. And then a failure of many universities and also schools in many countries, not only in our country, okay, in shifting from conventional teaching of learning into more technology based uh, teaching and, and learning. And that's, that's our, our current reality during this pandemic times. And what current studies have reported and suggested? Students, especially who live in low socioeconomic levels have problems in adapting to the online learning during the COVID-19 pandemics, since they do not have required facilities such as internet access. So these studies that is focused on the difficulties or the challenges of students and teachers in, in having online learning have been conducted not only by Likok and Varikan, I believe. A lot of studies also in Indonesia concern the same thing. But again, the idea is that it is, yes, important to speak about access issue, but more important than that is that we are getting back to the nature of educating itself. Educating means we are sharing values to our students if we are teachers. Educating ourselves as learners, of course, we are not simply trying to grasp as much information as possible, but how can the online learning that we are doing both formally and informally can lead us to be somebody that is worthwhile in the life. So what, what are now suggested by current researchers is that students are not only be familiar with the digital learning competencies, but also with the self-directed learning, self-regulation, metacognition awareness skills for online learning. And these elements will be the focus of our uh, presentation or our discussion. All right, so if you see if you Google, there are no more and more discussion on meaningful online learning, which means that probably starting to in 2020 until, I don't know, but I, I trust that starting 2020 life changes and online learning will be part of life. This will be a permanent um, mode of uh, learning in the, in the future as well, I trust. So then, it's quite reasonable. There are more and more experts now discussing how online learning can be can also be, uh, you know, a good friends of everyone. So people are no longer complaining about, uh, you know, uh, the boredom with online learning, for example, but making online learning as a facility that also create joyful and meaningful learning. So this book, if you if you Google, there are a lot of strategies that that are offered by the by the author. And then when we are speaking about meaningful learning, again as a teacher, though we are doing online learning, we can you know it, it's just actually a different environment, digital environment, and then conventional environment like in the classroom. But the focus of our teaching should should be on the same thing, which is helping students to to achieve a meaningful learning. So what we need to do. Think about how to make them active, how to help our students construct the knowledge by themselves, asking them to be more independent by giving them a model, okay, modeling on how to do an independent learning. So then we, we discuss self-directed learner, for example, self-directed learning concept that will probably help us to direct our student into be more responsible learner now and in the future. We also need to think about how uh, to facilitate our students with authentic materials that can help them develop their competence, their knowledge, their skills and expertise in the fields they are, they are trying to master. If they are students of English and they are going to be teacher of English, we need them uh, you know, be able to show to them how to access these authentic materials. Because online learning, as I said before, is not only something we can do formally, 
okay because we are at schools and then we are following certain uh, materials as outlined in the curriculum we introduce to our students and we can emphasize to our students that this online learning could be a facility for us to do an informal learning but they need to know how to do this informal learning so that they can understand how to set goals and finally can achieve the competence they, they are wishing for to achieve. So one thing to underline from this slide is that the same as conventional teaching and learning, when we are teaching, think about how to provide a meaningful teaching and learning activity for our students. Right, and in general, if we speak about effective online pedagogy, that's again, almost the same as the conventional uh, model of teaching. It's student-centered, especially in university level. We need to make sure that students develop their own, own knowledge with the facilitation or with the help from us as, as the lecturers, okay? And the, the active learning is also part of the online pedagogy. So it's basically only the environment that is different. One is digital, the other one. The other one is in real, okay, in the classroom, for example, but the focus would be made the same. There are three principles of effective online pedagogy. Maybe you can do more research on this. I think very interesting. One is that let the student do most, especially in university level. As I said, students should be given more portion to actively develop their knowledge. We are, we are facilitating them to build the knowledge. So the creations of knowledge is not only the, the responsibility of the lecturers. This time, everyone understands that the creations of knowledge is constructed socially. So in the, in the context of classroom, for example, both online or conven and conventional, the creations of knowledge should be between teachers and uh, uh, students, which means that we need to really help our students understand how to build knowledge. And then we need to also bring uh, some kind of awareness that knowledge creation is not only by the teachers, but it should be from the participants of uh, our students and then discussion, for example, could be a mode, could be a means for us to develop this knowledge so that students would be very active in, in sharing their knowledge and in building the knowledge in the, in the classroom context. Principle two interactivity is almost similar to what I have explained. It's about the, the, uh, the reciprocal relation between you and then your student. Okay, or if you are a student between yourself, with your teacher or with other students, all right? And then strive for presence, social, cognitive and teaching presence. So though online, we are physically, you know, in the stands, but we have to do something in order that there is a feeling that teachers and students are actually close to each other, all right? So again, the challenge of um, online learning is that boredom and then is isolatedness. Sometimes we feel like so much isolated because we feel that we are with many people, but once we shut down, we, we are in fact with ourselves, for example. So that's, that's part of the challenge. But again, these three principles of pedagogy should be the principles that can help us to guide uh, our teaching and, and learning practice, both online and uh, in a traditional way of, of teaching. But particular spatial, this principle is more for online pedagogy, all right? So in an online learning, students will be autonomous, self-motivated, and understanding of the ways to achieve their learning goals. So again, speaking, speaking about online learning is, is not speaking about something that is considered hard anymore, I trust. What is important now is that we build our belief that both online and conventional way of learning is, is actually about you know, providing good education to students. So that again, how to help our student to be an independent learner, an independent thinker would be still be part of the heart of our teaching practice. 
Now I'll try to relate <clears throat> this online learning with the three elements of 21st century skills, self-directed learning and metacognition. These are not new at all for every one of us, okay? But what I'm trying to highlight is that our awareness and our understanding of these three elements will be very useful in developing our consciousness, okay? In developing our consciousness in helping students to achieve their meaningful learning. Right, the reason why 21st century skills should be within the main agenda of our teaching, because it's real. Communication should be part of our students' uh, ability. The ability to communicate is now very important. If students cannot communicate their ideas very, uh, clearly, cannot develop their ideas and communicate those ideas clearly to audience, for example, the student might have problems when they are uh, becoming a future teacher of English. So while teaching in a university, and then we have students with us who will in the future be English teachers, for example, we need to make sure that yes, they are learning to be a communicator. Good communication skill is part of the 21st century skill. So whenever we are teaching online, again, <laughs> whenever we are teaching online, this idea of helping our students to have good communication skills should be part of our main agenda in our teaching, okay, as a lecturer or as a, as a teacher. And technology uh, use is also another uh, important element of the 21st century skills. So whenever we are developing a teaching material or whenever we are developing a teaching methodology, we always need to think about how to embed technology in our teaching. Our understanding of this 21st century skills will also help us to think about how to help our students to have growth mindset. Growth mindset is one of the big issue in 21st century skills. So whenever we speak about 21st life or 21st century life, we speak about people with growth mindset. People with growth mindset will be somebody that will keep opening the mind so that this kind of people will always be more and more open-minded to new um, ideas, new understanding. Okay, being an open-minded person should be one of the goal of every student. Okay, so if you are a teacher, this is not only the goal of yourself as a teacher, but it should also be the goal of your teaching. How can we help our student to be somebody with growth mindset? Okay, somebody who, uh, who has this growth mindset will be very flexible. So the flexibility of this person in seeing an issue, for example, is an indication that this person will be successful in facing more and more challenges in the 21st century era. So a lot of things we need to consider now as a teacher because the 21st century skills are yes, very complicated, but at the same time, this become our guideline in again, developing our teaching uh, materials or developing the teaching methods that we are implementing in our online learning. Again, online, offline are just mediums. The focus should be what we can do to make our students better and to make our students ready to face the challenge in the 21st century. And our understanding of the 21st century skills as teachers as, and students will be very useful when we are implementing this in our learning and teaching context. Okay, so a change in people's understanding of learning, this is quite clear. Okay. Okay, in traditional understanding, teacher was seen as the only source of knowledge, but not for today. Knowledge should be considered as a social construction. Okay, so we, we have a term social constructions of knowledge, which means that in the classroom context, teachers and students are given almost similar role. What is different is that teacher is the guide. Teachers is the model. 
while the process of knowledge construction should be made uh, equal between the teachers and the, uh, the students, which means that students should be given more and more portion now to share their ideas. But at the same time, we need to allow them through tasks, for example, to explore and to be exposed with informations that are needed in the creations of knowledge, quote unquote, knowledge itself. And in the past, it was important to memorize information. Now, people really lean on Google. So if they don't know any information, they can just you know, use their fingers and then Google. And everything is, is in Google. Almost everything is in Google. So this is a reality that is quite interesting with the fact that everything is in Google. And then students tend not to memorize those informations because they would say, Oh, it's in Google, why should I memorize all those stuff? So this is the challenge. How can we help our students to put information into their long-term memory with the fact that Google can help them anytime, all right? But as a teacher, we need to make sure that they understand putting information in a long-term memory is also important. And then discussion again, for example, about a certain topic that is conducted repeatedly would help them to understand that certain information is more important than others so that it is very, very essential that they put this information into their long-term memory, all right? So this is the reality today. This is a part of the education in, in uh, 21st century era. Uh, the challenge for teachers is real, but again, the idea is that it's always important to have our students uh, do something with our guidance and with an understanding that through this guidance, through the explorations of different kinds of information, our students understand that they can also participate in the productions of knowledge, which is the characteristic of the 21st century education, okay? And there are studies that, that uh, show the, the importance of uh, providing students with the 21st century skills in our class, any class, class of English, class of math, class of uh, sociology, the idea of uh, uh, 21st century skills should also be embedded, okay? And if you see uh, uh, here, this, this, this one by Lar et al, 2019, having up-to-date skills means having digital literacy digital competence, digital skills, and e-skills. So one of the, uh, one of the most uh, important uh, uh, difference between 21st century skills and uh, other skills uh, that are considered conventional skills are the, uh, the mastery of uh, something related to uh, digital. So that's why if you, if you Google, there are a lot of people speaking about digital literacy, which is one of the, again, heart or one of the issue in education of the 21st century. So 21st century skills and competencies are a strong predictor of student readiness for online learning. 21st century skills are an umbrella concept that covers life and career, learning and innovation and ICT skills. So whether you agree or not, I trust that everyone would say 21st century skills are skills that would help our students, ourselves to be more successful in this era, okay? I think I need to pause here, uh, allowing for people to think what I've explored and then think about any things I have just explained. Okay, if you have questions, feel free to ask. If you have comments, feel free to, to share your comments. Okay, so I think uh, two minutes, three minutes post would be very useful before we continue.
Right. So the moment of pause is for you to reflect. Okay. To reflect means to say yes to what I've just explained or to say no to what I've just explained. Everything, <laughs> feel free. Nothing wrong <laughs> with whatever you can conclude after this uh, point. Okay. But again, I just want to provide you some time to relax and then think for a moment of what you have uh, already listened from my presentation. <clears throat> Right, let me start again. <clears throat> I have explained before pausing or stopping for a moment my presentation that as a teacher, as a student, it's always now important to put uh, 21st century skills uh, as our main agenda. So if you are, for example, a student of English, Understanding how to teach English is, is important. Mastering English fluency is, is very important. Understanding how to spell a word is very important because you will be a teacher of English. Asking student how to read, knowing how to make student read a text is also important, okay? Knowing how to, to, um, to produce certain sound, like understanding the phonetic symbols, the phonology thing, okay, is super important for every teacher and every English teachers to be. But remember, understanding those content that are related to your English uh, mastery is not enough. Now, a teacher needs to be able to master something else. The skills, the 21st century skills are the umbrella that can help us uh, setting the goal of our teaching and setting the goal of our learning, all right? And now we move on to the second element, which is really in line with the idea of online learning that is called self-directed learning. Speaking about self-directed learning is actually about yourself, speaking about ourself. With the online learning, in the beginning of my presentation, I've said that there are two possible choices of learning. You can do it formally, you can do it informally, because you can open your gadget anytime, you can, you can mingle with your phone anytime, you can open it wherever you are, even when you are in a, you know, uh, in a place that is very, very far away from your own campus. When you are in the traditional market, you are sitting somewhere on the chair, in the corner of a chair, you can just open and Google, all right? <clears throat> the thing is that we need to know the theory of self-directed learning itself, especially those students who direct themselves to being teachers, all right? Teachers of English, math, any teachers. So self-directed learning is something that, <clears throat> that we need to always uh, and always improve in ourselves. But before we are able to improve it, before we are able to develop it through continuous practice, we need to understand the concept, okay? So <coughs> self-directive learning is actually a strategy or a way of yourself to put yourself in your learning pursuit, all right? <coughs> so once you understand that self-directed learning is a concept, you will know that it is important for exploration. So for example, after this presentation, those who haven't heard this term before would be expected to Google and try to understand what is self-directed learning and what is the importance of understanding the concept, okay, by teachers, by future English teachers. Okay, so when, once you, you, you know and you understand the concept, then you can set this concept and make it as part of your learning agenda. Okay, so if you see here, it's quite clear. When you are uh, doing uh, self-directed learning, you will be dealing with, for example, identifying learning resources. So as a learner, you need to learn how to identify appropriate materials, 
if you are studying about phonetic symbols, for example, okay, this very simple thing, you, you are expected to make kind of list. And then from this list, then you start doing an exploration. So this is an example of how you, you, you implement the self-directed learning. And then you also engage with peer discussion, for example. A self-directed learner would always fail you the importance of discussion. You did a paper and then your friend or your peer uh, read the same paper. You may gain the same thing, but there are more that you probably find different. Different ideas, different understanding might be there between yourself and then your, your peers. That's why you will always have an idea that it's important to discuss this. So then to you as a self-directed learner, you understand that discussing your understanding is always vital, all right? So again, self-directed learn, learn, learning is a concept. By saying a concept, it is something for you to understand. Once you understand the importance of self-directed learning, for example, then you will have a motivation to implement it. And this will be really in line with the idea of online learning that allow you to do an informal learning, all right? So teachers you now can no longer be you know, very proud of him or herself as teachers who, know, who are really knowledgeable. Probably, yes, we feel that we are really knowledgeable about <clears throat> a certain or specific knowledge. But once you discuss with your student, for example, you might find it quite shocking when your students know more than yourself. So from this idea, it's again important for every teachers to be more and more open-minded, seeing students now more as partners rather than simply as and you know, with the administrative term as student, which means that you need to feed them all the time. No, direct them, show them how to be a self-directed learner. By doing that, expect more from them that they can be part of your process in developing the knowledge of your concern. All right, so again, online learning allows the possibility for this self-directed learning concept to be implemented. There is a wide opportunity for now for this concept of self-directed learning to be implemented in our uh, online learning. So understanding this again will be very useful because once you know the concept, once you know the stages, then you can implement it in your daily learning online. <clears throat> Right, so I have highlighted this one. This is very conceptual. This is the definitions of self-directed learning. It is a learning in which the conceptualization, design, conduct, and evaluation of learning project are directed by the learner. If you are a learner, so do this one. If you are a teacher, try to show our student how to be a self-directed learning by telling them, making them understand the concept, and then ask them, through the task that you provided in that you provide in your class uh, to this way of becoming a more self-directed learner. Okay. So we'll not be tired as a teacher because we know that our student can can find out any information that we we wish uh, they uh, could find. All right. So again, sometimes what is important now is that for teachers to classify what concept to be understood by, by teachers and then by their students. And after that, our students to also try to understand those concepts so that we know, uh, so that we, we can make sure that students will be more successful in their learning. Okay, and again, part of the beauty or the treasure of online learning is that for our students, for ourselves as teachers, do more and more exploration. A lot of available online materials that we can access and that can be used to help us develop our career as a teacher, develop our knowledge that are very useful in, you know, in, the, in, the, in the building of knowledge in our field in language education, for example. And then the concept that we, <coughs> we think important to understand would also be uh, important to be transferred to our uh, students because we are speaking about <coughs> university student who have already 
<coughs> understood about learning, what they need sometimes, uh, you know, from, from us as teachers is, is the keyword. For example, I'm asking my student to explore certain keywords and then after that, they get back to me and then sharing with me what those keywords mean to them after exploring online. And then there is a joint constructions of knowledge, okay? And then this, this keyword, again, is something that we gain from our reading so that, yes, reading should be the key of our um, uh, personal development. And then the keyword that we get from reading should also be transferred to our, our student. And then this self-directed learning is, is a keyword that can help our student understand that online learning is something that they can do personally and by the guidance of themselves after understanding the concept of self-directed learning. Okay, uh, let me move on to uh, this. So students with selected learning skills will make the online learning process both easier and more efficient. In this context, it is necessary to gain self-directed learning skills for readiness for online learning. So again, the online learning will require your independence, will require your initiative, and then your initiative of learning should be built. How to build that initiative of learning? By understanding the concept of self-directed learning. Once you understand this, you know how to be an independent learner in terms of, or in the, in the context of online learning. So again, one thing to highlight, online learning is closely related uh, to self-directed learning. Once you understand the concept of self-directed learning, you will be uh, more independent in your online learning activity. And as, as, as I said, learning online provides you more opportunities to do it informally, all right? So you only, for example, meet your, your lecturers for two hours, okay, in a week to study about phonetics or to study about academic writing. But then with the concept of self-directed learning, you know that you have more time outside there to hone your skills of academic writing through YouTube, through reading examples that are uh, available online, okay? And then to, ev to, be, uh, to, to evaluate the existing models of academic writing, good and bad academic writing you compare, and then you make conclusion from that evaluation. So all this can only be conducted when you understand this concept of self-directed learning, and then you are willingly able to perceive this concept as part of your you know, uh, belief as a learner and as a lecturer or teachers. Last but not least is metacognitive skills, okay? So in the study that, that I have pr uh, presented in the second, uh, in the second slide of, of this presentation, there are three important uh, elements that can uh, ensure the readiness of students and teachers in dealing with uh, online learning. One is understanding about the uh, 21st century skills. Second is the understanding of uh, self-directed learning. And the third one is the metacognition, all right? So metacognition is another important element that is deemed to be, uh, to be useful when you are developing yourself as an active online learner, all right? So metacognition is a kind of building awareness from the inside when you are able to take control of your own learning when you know and when you understand that learning is a process that is happening mentally, okay? So sometimes um, we feel that we learn a lot, but we feel it's useless because we forget all those. There might be something wrong happen in the process of learning itself. We maybe do not control the cognitive processes that is happening during our learning process especially online learning, okay? I myself, for example, after reading something online, after reading something um, in the computer, my understanding is probably not as good as reading through printed papers. 
why it happens because there is a gap while i'm reading in uh, in you know a computer for example on my, on my laptop for example with something that i can you know highlight using my hand and then i can put my own handwriting you know over the the paragraphs for example and and so on there is a problem with with uh, the eyes you know reading uh, something online and once we understand that there is this gap we need then think to control how to make sure that we understand as good as reading something printed so this is a, an example of how controlling the cognitive process of learning is important okay how uh, trying to make sure that the process of understanding text online that needs more efforts, for example, is, is, is something that, that actually driven by the, the understanding of metacognition. So metacognition strategy would allow you to think of the thinking, okay? So how you, uh, the, the thinking mindset, how, how you handle the thinking, how you handle the way you understand something is, you know, uh, something related to uh, metacognition strategy. If you see in this slide, there are, there are two levels of uh, metacognition, okay? Uh, the comprehension level and then the experience level. So in the comprehension level, metacognition is the knowledge and skill of selecting cognitive strategies and setting goals during the cognitive process. So this is quite abstract. This is something related to you know, the mental process during learning. What is important is that, again, building awareness that the process of learning sometimes need more efforts. In order to understand a certain keywords, for example, we need more time. And then we keep like uh, reminding ourselves that this longer process is needed. So I need to be patient during the process. I need to be more patient during the process of understanding this key concept that is quite complicated. All right. So that's, that's an example of how a mental process uh, should be set while learning that we need more time. So I need to be patient. At the end, I will understand it, but I need to be patient, the time is much longer needed, for example. So that, that is an example of how a uh, mental process can also be an important element that we need to always uh, pay attention during the process of learning. And experience level is much more physical, okay? Something we, we can do uh, physically. So metacognition is the knowledge of skill of self-planning. All right, so you plan what you are going to do. And then self-monitoring, how can, how can you make sure that you already understand a certain concept? If I ask you about self-directed learning concept, do you really understand? Are you really there yet? <laughs> so self-monitoring is keep asking you yourself whether or not you have already reached a certain degree of comprehension, a certain degree of understanding of the concept you are studying, for example. And then self-modifying, how you modify the strategy of learning, for example, while memorizing is something that is hard to do, what else can you do in order to understand a concept? If trying to memorize the definition of uh, self-directed learning, that, that is a big, big work for you. What can I do in order to make sure that I understand it? So you, you think about how to modify a certain a strategy in order to understand a certain difficult concept, for example. And self-evaluating, this is always and always be an important part in every learning activity or learning process where you evaluate, okay? So you ask again, you give you yourself a reflective question. Do I know already what I learned? Do I understand already what I have learned? If somebody asks about the concept of uh, 21st century learning or example of skills in 21st century learning, can I answer those? Okay, and then you, your answer is that, mm, 
maybe yes, maybe no, All right? So if your answer is still maybe yes, maybe no, then you will need to get back to the reading and making sure that you really understand. And this is important for teachers, okay? Teachers sometimes need to be an angel. <laughs> When, when students are getting stuck, you know, sometimes we need to be somebody who guides. And how can we guide our student if we don't understand? Okay, so always making sure that the three elements of, uh, again, 21st century skills, self-directed learning and metacognition be part of our teaching and learning agenda. Um, as have been proven by, uh, I, I forgot the, the, the name of, of the researcher, but it's in the second slide of this presentation. The readiness of uh, students in dealing with online learning would really much depends on how they understand these three elements, the 21st century learning, self-directed, uh, the 20th, 21st century skill, self-directed learning and metacognition. Okay, there are a lot more at trust, but I think starting from these three elements as uh, part of our uh, teaching and learning agenda will be very, very useful, okay? And these studies, these studies have, have revealed the importance uh, of metacognition uh, in education in general and the, the process of, of learning in particular. In, uh, Pelas 2014 found a positive relationship between the metacognitive awareness levels of students registered in online learning at the university and the attitudes toward online learning. All right, so there is always the science of online learning and the science of online learning is closely linked to what to understand beyond that online learning itself, okay? So if we have this word of online learning, so what? There are a lot of things behind this, okay? One of the thing is that the awareness that online learning is complicated. The awareness that at the same time, online learning provide us with boredom, demotivation and so on. But what can we do in order to solve those potential problems that can hinder our students from learning? So this metacognitive or metacognition strategies can be one of the means to, you know, to ensure the success of our students in their learning. And again, knowing that metacognition plays an important role in the process of online learning, we need to understand it. And if we are a teacher, we need to transfer this knowledge to our student and making sure that they apply these metacognitive strategies in their learning. All right. Speaking about the effectiveness as, uh, of metacognitive uh, strategies in online learning is clear already. This research or this result of studies or the evidence, what is important now is that we need to take an action, a real action, an actual action that is to understand this better, understand how to implement this, and finally transfer this to our student and observe if they can apply in their learning process, okay? I don't want to read this <laughs> too much, but what is important again, that online learning is super challenging, okay? I will not who study that prove that. It is really challenging. Okay, my personal experience has been the real evidence that teaching online is not something easy. Okay, I'm feeling much more difficult in expressing myself while teaching, for example, people can, can only see, you know, my gesture, for example. People can probably, you know, uh, listen to my presentation for one to two minutes because they are tired already. So these are the challenges that are real in, a, in an online uh, education in general. But again, there is no more option. We need to always be able to cope with any situation. And our understanding, again, one about the nature of online learning, which is almost similar as the conventional one, okay, should be in, in, our, in our mind, which means that we cannot reduce anything. 
is the same. It's the process of teaching and learning. The difference is the environment. One is in the digital environment, the other one in a real environment, environment like in a real classroom. But the focus should be the same, that is providing our students with a meaningful learning, all right? Second, we need to make sure that our students understand how to learn. Knowing that learning online is you know, more challenging, as I say, than the conventional one, we need to tell them something. We need to show them something that is an understanding of self-directed learning concept. We tell them the importance of doing this, we tell them the, uh, the concept, and then we make sure through the task that we provide to our student, they are directing themselves with the concept. They are implementing what they understand about self-directing concept. And more than it, we also need to help our student that building or processing uh, learning cognitively is also important. And that should be the attention of most students while learning. So metacognition strategies should also be brought into practice. Our understanding as teacher about metacognition strategy should be transferred to our, our student. So by, by providing this understanding, our expectation is that our student can learn better than before, okay, in both online and offline contexts. So that's the end of my uh, presentation. I hope more questions could be raised or concerns about my presentation could also be shared. Uh, you can also share, of course, your, your experience, your understanding that you gain from your experience so far uh, in practicing online learning into the forum. And then we discuss further, okay? So thank you very much. That's, that's the end of my uh, presentation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Udi Saman Hudi, PhD, for the interesting presentation. Everyone, let's give a big applause for our amazing speaker. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we come to the question and answer session. Please raise a hand, open your mic, and mention your name. Or if you can't, uh, you could also ask from the chat box. Uh, maybe I will read some uh, from the chat box if there's no one who raised a hand. Okay, because there's no one who raised a hand, I will read the questions from the chat box. Okay, the first question is from Mok Gian. How to motivate ourselves as student of university? Okay. What do you think? How do you motivate yourself as a student, as a university student? <laughs> Learning is, is not only the business of student, it's the business of everyone, including me, myself. Okay, I put myself as a learner, which means that learning is part of my daily activity. All right. The very first thing when it comes with, pro, uh, with what, well, well, sorry, when it comes with a motivation problem, the very first thing I would do is that checking again my, uh, my awareness of learning. Okay, so my awareness of learning means while learning, do I really put myself into my learning? Do I learn something that I really want to learn? Am I having a clear goal with my learning? Why am I learning this one? Why am I learning about factors affecting individuals' online learning readiness? What is important and of understanding this for me? Once I understand that there is benefit of learning A, of learning key factors affecting my online learning readiness, I would normally feel more motivated to learn. So the problem may be with your understanding about the benefit of what you are learning. So my, my first suggestion is that once you decide to learn a topic, ask yourself, what is the usefulness or what, the, what is the significance of learning this topic? Try to explore, try to understand the significance that you gain after learning the topic. And after that ask, should I continue or stop? But if it is from your lecturer, because you are a student, and then your, your lecturers want you uh, to, to learn a certain uh, topic 
always again ask yourself, okay, your position as a student and you are in an English department, as a future English teacher, what is the benefit of learning the topic for you? I trust that your lecturers give you topics that are useful for you as a person, for you as an English teacher to be, for you as an English student, okay? And so on. So always try to find out the benefit of what you learn, list as many as possible. Trust me, this will build your motivation. Okay, we are not motivating in learning something because we don't understand why we are learning that and for what. So always set the goal in your learning, try to understand the goal of learning. That will be very useful. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Rudy Samanudi, for <clears throat> the answer. And then uh, I will read the second question, or is there anyone who wants to raise a hand and ask? If there's no one, I will read the second question. This is from Mr. Ino. Yeah, Mr. Ino, uh, PTSD. I would like to ask, what do you think about the students' dynamic change in their way of learning? They are easily distracted, prefer the easiest way in completing the task and Googling blogs rather than reading their reference books. Yeah, good. very good question, thank you. Uh, that's part of the dynamic of online learning. I think it's not only in online learning. Even when, when we are still doing a traditional teaching, we are in the classroom and then asking our student to complete homework, okay? We, we would normally expect that students will go online and then find out the resources or the materials. The problem is that our students are trapped with the online you know, activities. Rather than focusing on the key word that direct them to the, to the information needed, they would go to YouTube first, they will go to you know, somewhere else exploring anything else. <laughs> and that's part of the beauty of online learning actually. But again, again, as a learner, as a teacher, we always and always need to remind ourselves the goal of learning a certain uh, topic, for example, understanding the significance of learning and the reasons why we are learning that topic will be very useful. And of course, with the deadline, I trust that our students would finish the, the homework uh, uh, before, before the deadline. That's what we expect. The distraction is part of the online learning. So we should be no worries with that. What we need to think is that building awareness around the importance of staying focused. All right? So what I do to my students, because I understand, I myself experience that distraction. You know, I really want to, to start with this, but before starting this one, I want to see if B is okay to see. I want if it is okay to also see C, okay? Maybe there is something more interesting in C. You know, all is in our laptop. All is in, in, you know, in the online world and so on. We understand that there is that potential destruction. That is why we keep reminding ourselves that we need to stop to a certain, uh, you know, degree that I will only focus for 10 minutes and after that I will allow myself to explore. So again, uh, receive the fact that distraction is part of the digital life, but at the same time, please always build awareness that staying focused is important. Deadline is also important to be in the mind of every student. Yeah. So I think we have to be friendly with this disruption because that's part of the nature of online learning. Everything online is always interesting. That's why we always want to explore. And that contributes to our knowledge, actually, which maybe later on will be useful as well. But again, stay focused. That's how we could, our, uh, could uh, you know, guide our, our students into more focus on what they, they, they learn. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Rudy Samanhudi for the answer. And now I will read the third question. Uh, but before that, uh, is there anyone who want to raise a hand and ask? Yes, Mr. Abdul? Yeah. Yes, sir. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Rudy. Uh, Samanodi, I think your presentation is related to my last question from the first presenter. So I was asking actually about subdirected learning. So uh, as I see and read from the question that the student asked you about where they are still at loss when they find their motivation. So if it relates to their metacognitive uh, skills, uh, it means uh, does this uh, student directed learning only suit for the student who are at a certain level of their metacognition level? Or maybe they only for the higher education uh, students uh, or what? Because I think uh, for the metacognition level, the students are able to uh, need to be able to do like a self planning, self evaluating. And I guess some of the students, even they are at their higher education level, they are not ready for, for doing so. So do you think, because the, the uh, my last paper, I also discussed about this uh, student-directed learning, and then I tried to blend with uh, the other uh, point with synchronous and asynchronous level. Do you think that uh, this student-directed learning only for some certain level of the student? Or uh, we can start from the early stage. I think uh, it, yes. Yeah. I need, I need uh, to bring more evidence to say, for example, it's, it's good to, to introduce this self-directed learning concept as early as possible because X found that blah, 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 or it's good to be brought in a higher level education because blah, 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 all right? But the problem is that this afternoon, I don't have those uh, evidence, all right? I need time to explore. But to my understanding, Sorry. But to my understanding, this self-directed learning could be studied even early, okay? To my experience as parents, for example, um, the, very first, the very first question I asked to my, my boy is that, why do you read this one? <clears throat> or why do you watch this? All right, so I start with that very broad question with the significance of, of what he is doing. And then he would say, well, I, I know this from watching this, this channel. I know about America because I, I, I watch this channel. So my boy who is 10 years old know the reason why he watches that, okay? And understanding goal of learning is part of the self-directed learning concept. So within the self-directed learning is that we understand the key goal that we are going to achieve by, by doing a certain learning or a certain reading activity, all right? So if the question is, is it good to be studied earlier? I would really suggest yes. My experience is my evidence, okay? Probably other researcher would say no, but to my understanding, this concept could be brought even earlier and could be introduced to our uh, you know, uh, students even in early level. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's my, my, my simple uh, and short answer. But from the philosophical layer of this concept, this is just a process of uh, bringing awareness of learning, which means that through giving an understanding of stages of learning, and then we tell, for example, our student that the goal of learning should be this one, I trust that everyone could do this one. What is important is that we introduce it we make sure that they understand the concept and then we help to monitor how they implement the concept. While once we find that they, I mean, our students find it now okay to implement the self-directed learning, they understand that they are aware with their learning, we can stop controlling them. We trust that they can learn from themselves and by themselves, okay? I think uh, so uh, by stating the, the goals of the learning so uh, and, and uh, make the student understand what they have to achieve, uh, what the, the outcome of the learning, they can fully take control of their uh, learning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rudy, I think. Yeah, you, you are welcome. I've, you know, different case would, yeah. would be for everyone, you know, but again, bringing my own evidence, I think this is something not difficult to do by even kids, <laughs> as long as we tell them and make them understand what they are doing. 
because the two uh, the two uh, the two students ask the same question about when they are at loss uh, find mm-hmm. equation for learning so how do we actually do the self directed learning when they at the metacognition level are not ready yet <laughs> right <laughs> but again this this is the challenge for us you know sometimes we need to value the explicit teaching um we 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 as understand active learning okay in active learning we ask our student to find out and to conclude something from the exploration they do but sometimes we need to get back to the traditional way of teaching called explicit teaching you know for giving our student an understanding on the concept level sometimes we need to tell them so giving the definition for example there's no problem at all because that will help giving them a concrete idea of what uh, self directed learning is tell them what it is and then tell them how to do this concept in real stage per stage okay and after that we help to monitor it so starting by introducing them the concept especially to adult learners i think that would be an ideal uh, way to start introducing uh, the concept to them for the kids level i don't think so we cannot start with the definition that's too abstract okay that's why i just ask my my kids for example why do you learn this oh, sorry why do you watch this why do you read this so that's actually asking what is actually your goal if you understand it i trust you will motivate uh, you will be so much motivated in doing the watching activity or learning that can help him uh, building the knowledge for himself so yeah we understand the nature of you know students adults and kids are different the approach to the you know to the proficiency of understanding about the concept is also different but the key idea is that we can introduce the concept to any level of students and it is the way the strategy that we need to adopt that is probably different and then we have to understand how to to make sure that our student know the concept and implement in their daily uh, activity as a student but for university student i think it's important to start from what it is and then what the strategies are like what the stages are and then how to implement and then we monitor and then make sure it work thank you sir mm-hmm. so yeah that's that's what i can answer no right and wrong <laughs> 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 right okay uh, is there any other questions here thank you mr rudy for the answer and there's another question on on the chat box but before that uh, is there anyone who want to raise a hand and ask it if there's none then i will read the question in the chat box uh, this is from sir yudi uh sa so, how to build students critical thinking in research class during this pandemic era that's the question <laughs> this is a very challenging hard <laughs> question this is itself is critical thinking actually you know somebody who is doing research somebody called himself or herself a researcher is actually a critical thinker okay you you have to first of all understand the nature of research So when we are teaching research for example start with the with the concept of research what is actually research okay so research yes in bahasa indonesia mencari kembali which means that there is somebody out there who have previously studied our 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 uh, our topic of research okay but beyond that word of research we have a lot of thinking skills that we are put into practice we are doing analysis we are doing synthesizing of theories we are doing conclusion activity we are doing um, uh, verification we are doing a lot of thinking skills there so the nature of research is actually critical thinking so start with this understanding that once you are doing research you are dealing with critical thinking and then you break it down into smaller pieces called skills thinking skills like analysis okay synthesis and so on and then you start introducing what they are and how to do those skills so once you said <clears throat> what if you understand all this and how know how to put them into practice you are a critical thinker <laughs> so 
that's what I can answer. Research itself is critical thinking, okay? Because beyond the word research, there are series of thinking skills that you have to introduce, okay? So a good researcher is not, is not exist if he or she is not a critical and reflective thinker. <laughs> we need more time to discuss this, I, I, I believe. <laughs> but the idea is that <clears throat> research is critical thinking. When you say it is a critical thinking means there are skills, there are thinking skills that need to be mastered. Because you are a lecturer, then you have to introduce what are those thinking skills that are closely linked to research. And after that, you explore and then you bring into practice how to do analysis, how to do syn synthesis, how to do conclusion and, and whatever. Okay, so any thinking skills that are related to research activity should be further elaborated to ensure the understanding of a student toward that concept. And the second one, bring them into practice and show. Okay, so modeling again is important. And we have to be, yeah, sometimes a good model, okay, in, in, in telling something about the skill of thinking is included, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for the answer. Yeah, you're very welcome. Uh, okay, uh, there's still another question, sir. Yes, please. <clears throat> okay, uh, so this is from um, Gian Mauludin. So the question is, in conventional learning, we as a student of university should be self-learning, but in online learning, self-learning is more complicated than conventional. One of the problems that occurred is we as a student sometimes underestimate the learning and didn't and not interested. So how to motivate ourselves with uh how to motivate ourselves more in online learning? Mm -mm. Yeah, that's that's uh I think one of the core of this discussion. Given the fact that online learning is complicated, tiring, motivation always an issue. That's why the very first question that I asked to everyone when I opened the presentation is about motivation, okay? <clears throat> Again, you need to, to be familiar with yourself, okay? Your learning style, your understanding about, uh, you know, self and your, yourself as a learner should be the very first thing that you put into your um, learning agenda. I understand that I'm somebody who are not really visual. Okay, I don't, I don't uh, watch YouTube in order to understand an issue. I would love to read. So because I understand that watching is not quite useful for me, I will just download any material that I think I can read. While reading, I can highlight, I can reread, and then I can make a short summary of what I have read. And I feel more, you know, I mean, the learning is there. The process of learning is when I'm reading. So my understanding about myself and my preference of learning is helping me building my personal motivation. So understanding the style of your learning is super important in the outset in the very beginning of the learning process. And the second one, again, ask the significance of any topic that you are reading. Now, I'm learning narrative inquiry informally, okay? So I say to myself, I do another PhD for four years, but by myself. <laughs> so I'm setting this learning for two to three years in order to produce a book on narrative inquiry because I'm really falling in love with this research approach, for example. So I am asking myself how to really start in order to be successful in learning this. I know that I will do this mostly individually, though I have, uh, I have peers that, that are now with me. I have a group of uh, uh, researchers who are doing narrative inquiry, okay? But this is my personal uh, learning because I built this curiosity myself. So the very first thing I do is that, 
how can I be successful in my journey of understanding and producing a book on narrative inquiry? So I start with that. I identify my preference of learning online. I'm not through YouTube, I'm through online uh, uh, materials that are written, something written, not something that are shown like through a <laughs> video, for example. So by identifying how I learn best compared to other learning style is super useful, okay, in directing me and in building my motivation. So ask yourself what the problem is, why you are so demotivated, is that because you do not find the topic you are learning interesting? If yes, try to find out a similar topic or the same topic, but with different people telling about the topic or somebody that writes about the topic. If you read that topic written by, by Mr. Brown, find out the topic that is written by Mr. Yudi, for example. Maybe it's more interesting because the way people write ideas is different. And maybe we have a certain uh, you know, preference of learning, uh, sorry, writing style. For example, I'm not really harmers. I'm not harmers. <laughs> to me, harmers book is too practical. It doesn't give me, it doesn't feed me with, you know, underpinning theories that can help me think. So I'm not with Harmer. Though people use Harmer, I'm not. I have Harmer's book, but I know that I will not read a lot of uh, Harmer's work because to me, that is just practical book. A book that doesn't give me uh, space to think. All right, so I will find out a similar ideas written by other authors, for example, that allow me to think, that allow me to, to see something beyond a concept. And again, this is about writing style and this is about my preference. So the more you ask yourself, the, the more you produce a reflective question on your own learning for your own uh, learning development, the better you will find uh, your, your, yourself, including your motivation into the, the things that you are learning. All right. Yeah, that's what I can respond. There is no right and wrong. Once again, this is really about how you understand your learning process. That's why reflective questions are always essential to be addressed to ourselves during the process of learning. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, sir, for the answer. Uh, you are very welcome. Sir, so there is one more question, but the question is quite similar with the <clears throat> one that uh, you have already answered. So should I still read it or no? If you think that is uh, helpful, you can read it for me and for everyone. If you think I just, I will just repeat the, the answers, that or not. <laughs> you are the owner of the event. <laughs> okay. I'm your guest. <laughs> uh, so the, the question is quite the same, but this is uh, one of the topic at uh, one of the point that is quite different is how should we deal with uh, the issues that keeping us from being motivated uh, or how should we direct ourselves to get the information that we need? Yeah, it's almost actually it's almost the same. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would again. I would. I would really uh, love to highlight the reflective questions. Okay, so always and always pose a reflective question for yourself during your learning process. Okay, sometimes it's not your lecturers who would say, "Oh, yeah, you are successful learner. You are great. Your GPA is three point ninety ninety five. You are super." And then deep here in your heart, you say, hmm, I'm not actually that good and that smart. I don't think I'm a good learner, okay? Sometimes you, it's, it's ourselves who can be very honest, yeah? The same, the same as uh, the process of learning, the honesty in the journey of, of our learning is also important. So always and always ask yourself, if you have already understood a certain concept, what is the evidence? What is the evidence that you really comprehensively understand that concept? 
if we today speak about self-directed learning, metacognition, 21st century skills, you ask yourself, do I really understand with those? Am I getting more confused that they didn't understand? If I confuse, why? If I don't understand, why? If I understand, what's the evidence that I understand? So always challenge yourself. That's, I think, the key. Challenge to understand what you think you have understood. That's the key to success in learning. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for mm -hmm. the answer. Uh, I guess in the chat box, uh, there's no more question, but is there anyone who would like to ask? Please raise your hand. Remember, I'm, I'm not the Dewa who knows everything about learning. What I, I respond, I mean, what I, what I could say to you is that it's ourself the key of you know, our own success in learning. And the understanding of these key factors is just a means for us to better or to make our learning process better and to be more successful. And again, that word of successful, the measurement should come from yourself, from ourselves, not from others. Sometimes like something that is very instrumental is not important, okay? The most important is that something that is honestly and genuinely coming from our own uh, self. Yeah, honestly. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Mm. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Udi Samanhudi, uh, PhD, for amazing presentation and answer. You're very welcome. <laughs> I hope all I have said is useful. <laughs> yes, it's very, very useful. Yeah, thank all you. All right, then. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, to sir. All right then, ladies and gentlemen, finally we come to the end of the presentation. From this amazing presentation, we learned that teachers could provide tasks that will help students to improve their self-directed learning. We could help by giving them source of experience so that learners will be more motivated to the self-directed learning. Keep in mind that students knowing more is completely okay because that means that they did the self-directed learning successfully. As a teacher, we need to remind ourselves the goal of learning and teaching, distraction is part of online learning, so, need, so we need to build awareness for what to do to stay focused. Staying focused and that line is important also. We need to guide the students to the self-directed learning by introducing what they have to achieve and what they are doing. So self-directed learning could be introduced from the early phase as long as we let them know what it is and the teacher could monitor the process of it. To be more motivated, students need to be to understand about their self first and their goal, their learning style, and find something that fits their preference. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, uh, here, English Education Study Program would like to thank you. Uh, would like to thank Mr. Udi Samanhudi, PhD. We You're would welcome. Like thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you too. Yeah. We would like to give a token of appreciation. Appreciation presented by Mr. Abdul Almanar <clears throat> MPD as the English Festival 2022 Spice of Chairman virtually. Thank you very much, Mr. Udi Samanudi, PhD. I think you're, mm -hmm. you're welcome. Thank really you. Inspiring. And then we, uh, as the participants and also on behalf of the committee, would like to give our highest appreciation for your materials about uh, student directed learning, which is it is SDL. And uh, speaking about SDL and speaking about this online learning, this, sh this shifting of the online uh, learning from offline is quite challenging for us. And also for the participant, mostly they are at the age of the semester. So I think uh, the material presented by Mr. Ruby Saman Ruby is actually really beneficial for all of you guys. So uh, you can be ready uh, for your future for your career as an educator. And I think uh, uh, this challenge is not a challenge and it is not a new normal because it's a normal for having online class uh, at this time. And yeah, right. <laughs> I think we as a part of education in Indonesia should be ready and challenge 
and implement this uh, 21st learning century as an umbrella, like what Mr. Rudy said, because the student or uh, maybe the, the, the learner with a communicative critical thinker and their problem solving and uh, the one who have a very good opportunities uh, will have greater career and also they will have uh, maybe uh, they will have their own dreams to make it come true. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Udi, for joining our English Festival 2022. Uh, I say thank you on behalf of the committee. Yep. I think that's all. Thank you very much. And this is the certificates uh, for you as the second thank you. keynote speaker for the English Festival uh, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Udi. Yeah. You are very welcome, Pa Abdul. Thank you so much. This is an honor once again. So much appreciated. Thank you so much. We do hope that we can join uh, for the research collaboration about uh, this uh, student directed learning. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm very happy to participate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I give the floor for the moderators of the webinar. Thank you very much, Mr. Udi Saman, Hudi, PhD, for the amazing presentation, and also to the audience for your participation. Hopefully, the presentation will be beneficial for everyone. Thank you for your attention. Now I return the control to the Master of Ceremony again. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam so warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, thank you very much to Sister Zihni Khernatamami who has led the presentation and Mr. Udi Samanhudi PhD for the amazing presentation materials today. And that was a very perfect performance from our speakers, right? Yes, indeed. We have learned so many information and knowledge from our speakers today. We would like to remind for the participant of the webinar to fill in the attendance form by using the link has been shared in Zoom chat box. And please type your name carefully as it will be written in your certificates. And please use the correct email because it will automatically the certificates get into your email. Once again, I remind you to fill the attendance form because only participants who fill in the attendance list will get a certificate. And sorry for our speakers and participants for a while minutes. Please open the camera because we will have photo session today. Okay. I will screenshot the first slide. Give your best slide. One, two, three. Okay. Next slide. One, two, three. Again, for slide three. Okay, there are so many participants here. Okay, again. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, we have reached the end of the event. Let's close this event by saying Hamdallah. Alhamdulillah, alamin. Many thanks to the lecturer, the speakers, moderators. Thanks for Mrs. Santri Ipi Jahimo, SPD, MF Linguistic, PhD, and Mr. Udi Samanhudi, PhD, for the excellent material and participants who have listened to the event from beginning to end. Hopefully, a lot of knowledge going to be applied in everyday life, and hopefully, we can all take the meaning and benefit of the material. Amin. Amin. I'm Vanessa Cecilia, and my partner, Vanessa Duyananur, as the master of ceremony of the webinar, representing the entire committee and even organizer, apologize for every single mistake from our efforts to all the research persons, speakers, and participants. Once again, we do apologize profusely. Thank you all for joining our webinar at the English Festival 2022. This is not our last meeting because there are still other events that you can attend. Okay, after this webinar, we'll be continuing with English competition.
Okay, don't forget to stay healthy, happy, keep smiling, always strong, and enjoy your day. Nice to see you. See you at the next webinar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Waalaikumsalam. Sorry, good afternoon, all the committees. Uh, I need you to be able to stay on here. We have to coordinate first. Doing a coordination together. Thank you. Tagis, Tagis, hello, I cannot hear your voice, sit in mute. Iya, kenapa, karena. Oke, okay. ini uh, zoom-nya mati dulu atau tetap menyala, nanti jam satu bisa langsung. Uh, peserta masuk jam berapa ya? Peserta masuk jam 1 kalau nggak salah. Masuk, masuk jam 1. Mungkin kita istirahat dulu kali salat dulu karena nanti okay. di itu yang sama aja. Oh, Oke. Okay. Di link yang sama. Oh, Oke. Okay. Ntar uh, mana sih BTS? Halo Sigit. Kan link Halo, juga nggak apa-apa, Bu. Paling pakai itu kan, pakai musik gitu loh. Iya, yeah, so we can take a break. And then we will start at 1 p.m. gitu, Kak Agis. Sambil menunggu ini, kita bisa uh, menyalakan musik atau video tentang um, apa uh, UMT. Gitu. Ini yeah. uh, belum panik, ini masih banyak ini ya peserta ya.
Uh, praksi, are you there? Host intinya siapa ini? Uh, Hilal, are you there? Yang bukan panitia bisa di remove aja dulu ya. Well, Budia, are you there? Uh, masih mute ya? Enggak bisa unmute ya, Budia ya? Oh my God. Berarti enggak memungkinkan ya kalau kita koordinasi di, di sini. Oke, okay, sebelumnya saya ucapkan terima kasih dan selamat ya untuk MC Vanessa Vanessa, moderator Zihni, dan Pak Ika Ugi. Thank you very much for the great work. Oke, okay. uh, Alhamdulillah webinar kita selesai ini ya. Kita akan lanjut ke uh, English Competition. Uh, saya berharap untuk yang panitia di English Competition sudah ready semuanya. Ada kabar tadi dari uh, storytelling ya Bu Dihaya, jurinya diganti ya, uh, diganti dengan Bu Rosnani ya Pak Rida ya. ya. Jadi uh, menurut informasi tadi Pak Rida Hanum sudah menghubungi Bu Rosnani dan Bu Rosnani uh, bersedia untuk menjadi juri karena Pak Aidil kebetulan tidak bisa hadir. Uh, jadi... Sebelumnya terima kasih Pak Rida sudah koordinasi dengan sangat baik sehingga kita bisa mempersiapkan ini. Um, yang tidak menggunakan kode nanti akan di remove oleh BTSI. Uh, sehingga saya berharap uh, Anda ubah namanya ya, tolong. Karena ini continuous zoom gitu loh, nggak mati dulu. Sementara kita maunya English competition ini tidak ada tidak ada peserta uh, lain selain dari yang ikut lomba sama panitia saja. Gitu. Um, oh, ya tidak ikut serta ini. Oke. Okay. Sepertinya yang nggak ada ini memang uh, ini Bu Dia. Apa namanya? Mungkin mereka nya lagi keluar atau apa? Cuman mereka in di dalam, in di sini gitu. Oke. Okay. Uh, jadi yang jadi MC di storytelling jangan lupa ya jurinya itu diganti. Menjadi Bu Rosnani MPD. Kemudian untuk yang lainnya semoga sudah ready nanti. So thank you very much. Kita akan lanjut nanti jam 1. Ya. Oke. Bilai Taufik wal Hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you semuanya yang webinar hari ini. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mis ini webinar berarti keluar juga ya Mis ya? Eh, uh, keluar boleh, stay boleh. Baiknya sih keluar aja ya. Jadi, host uh, dimatikan saja dulu ini karena masih banyak yang partisipan di sini. Baik, Miss. Terus, yeah. Miss, yang, yang absen yang tadi di chat, kita panitia harus ngisi juga apa enggak? Ah, Yopi sudah bikin absen belum untuk panitia? Sekretariat. Sekretaris gak ada. Eh, sekretariat tolong bikin tolong bikin absen ya untuk sertifikat seluruh panitia ya.
Ini boleh tutup dulu oleh BTS ya. Boleh, boleh, uh, Bu Dia. Uh, jangan lupa yang sekretaris tolong bikinkan absen untuk seluruh panitia. Thank you very much. We'll see you again in the next uh, session. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Izin lihat ya.